Yeah. Thank you. Um, my mentor, my mentor to oh, Dr. Mahesh. Okay. Yeah. We will now start the second session of the CME. We request Dr. Vijay Kamath, consultant from Baptist Hospital, and Dr. Madhur Temkar, consultant, Chinmay Mission Hospital, to chair the session. Kindly come to the dais. Good morning, every yeah, good morning, everyone, and thank you to Dr. Hiranya for having us here. Uh, so we'll start the next session, which is on minimally invasive decompression and fusion. Uh, there's going to be a slight change in the order. Uh, since Dr. Manoj has to go to OT, he'll be starting first, and his topic is going to be on unilateral laminectomy uh, with a bilateral decompression. Over to Dr. Manoj. So, uh, today my topic is the unilateral laminotomy for bilateral decompression. So, ULBD is a minimal invasive surgical technique for the decompression of the spinal theta. So, the process required a unilateral exposure and over the top decompression. So, we required only the unilateral retraction of the muscles. So, it minimized the atrophic injury to the paraspinal muscles and also preserved the midline tension band structures. So it is a gold standard <coughs> standard for the removing the most of the lumbar canal stenosis cases. The advantage is the smaller incisional incisional less traumatic approach. So the all very well know the uh, definition of the uh, lumbar canal stenosis is the epidiameter is uh, normal is 13 mm when it's out 10 to 13 mm is the relative stenosis when it is epidiameter is less than 10 mm it is absolute stenosis. When the cross section area is less than 100 and it's mainly 7 to 200 is a moderate stenosis and when the this cross section area is less than 76 mm square is a severe stenosis. Siaz et al give the MRI based uh, classification of the lumbar uh, this uh, canal stenosis in severe canal stenosis uh, in severe canal stenosis there is a no CSF visible no roots available and uh, on extreme stenosis, there is no epidural fat uh, visible. So these are the basic pathology uh, of the central canal stenosis, like the ligamentum flammum hypertrophy, ligamentum flammum hypertrophy, disc space collapse, which causes the ligamentum flammum buckling, degenerative spinalosis, a disc bulge, facet hypertrophy, osteopathy, epidural fat, and varices. So what are the option for the lumbar canal, MIS option for the lumbar canal stenosis? So we have uh, this three options. One is the ULBD, unilateral laminotomy, bilateral decompression. So it may be under the uh, loop guidance, under the endoscopic or maybe microscopic. So the second is the bilateral laminotomy. And third is the spinous process osteo osteotomy. So like these are the three different minimal invasive approaches for the lumbar canal stenosis. First is the uh, ULBD, whether we do, uh, start, uh, we do the ipsilateral phlebotomy, laminotomy, and over the deep decompression. Second is the bilateral phlebotomy and laminotomy. And third is the osteotomy before the spinous process, maybe the central or the base osteotomy of the spinous process to decompress the central canal. So these are the recent publications uh, from Norway in 2022 showing the three basic approaches and, uh, this and the clinical results. So you. So the ULBD have uh, this uh, very uh, significant uh, less duration procedure time, less hospital stay, less blood loss, less incidence of a dural tear, less proportion of the infection, and less uh, reoperation required compared to the bilateral laminotomy and the spinous process osteotomy procedure. So that these are uh, <coughs> the Lietal. Uh, Lietal define the uh, zones of the uh, stenosis. There's a central zone, subarticular zone, foraminal zone divided into the three three zone like entry zone, mid zone, and the uh, exit zone, and then the extra foraminal zone. So 
with the ulbd on the ipsilateral side we can decompress up to the central canal lateral recess and entry zone so to we on the same side we decompress up to the entry zone on the contralateral side we decompress up to the mid zone so these are the uh, indications of uh, mainly the most and important indication is the no or very mild back pain the patient which have a no and mild back pain with neurological collocations with radiculopathy due to the lateral stenosis because the foramen stenosis is the relative contraindication for the ulbd facet joint cyst with the central canal stenosis grade 1 spondylolysis who have a minimal radical pain without foramen stenosis and the degenerative scoliosis which have a cob angle less than 20 degree no coronal and sagittal deformity with no significant pl and il match the contraindications are patient with a severe back pain where the back back was is more than the leg major instability prior surgery the stenosis in the exit zone and the far lateral zone are very difficult to address with the ulbd like in the congenital stenosis which is better to do the central uh, uh, decompression than compare the ulbd and the patient which have a degenerative scoliosis which cob angle more than 20 with a high degree of foronal and sagittal deformity with high degree of a pelvic incidence and lumbar lordosis mismatch so these are the uh, publication which showing the uh, results of ulbd in the grade 1 analysis so the ulbd is the recommendable procedure now for the treatment of the patient with the grade 1 degenerative spondylolysis who have mainly the radicular pain so the approach <coughs> so in ulbd uh, if patient have a uh, disc herniation with the lumbar canal stenosis we go from the same side if the lateral approach we do the discectomy and then decompress the Uh, over uh, over the top decompression from the same side if the patient have a lumbar canal stenosis with the bilateral radiculopathy is depend upon the surgeon choice also depend upon the is better to for the right handed is go from the left side because it's easy to cut the bone from uh, down to up compare from the opposite hand so from the left handed is better to go from the right side if the patient have a lumbar canal stenosis with unilateral radiculopathy without pivd if the patient have a central stenosis lateral up to the entry zone stenosis then we decompress either from the ipsilateral or contralateral sides but the patient if have a unilateral radiculopathy with the mid zone stenosis then the contralateral approach is the better option in the patient with a lumbar canal stenosis with the instability then we go from the same side uh, from the tilif side so the position <coughs> the procedure under the general anesthesia prone position operating table depend upon the institution choice is maybe the jackson table and rule spinal table or the bolster this the strapping is very important in the ulbd because for the contralateral decompression we turn the table or either we turn the patients on the opposite side or on the same side we need a good quality cm and uh, the procedure is mainly under depend upon the surgeon choice under the pentro or vero microscope under the loop and the endoscope so the, the the key, key instruments are according to the surgeon's preference and the hand comfort like the retractor we use tubular mainly in our center we use the tubular retractor the other retractor like the taylor retractor macular retractor and the unilateral position of the retractor avoid the dissection of the paraspinal muscles bilateral so these are all are the unilateral retractors for ulbd we need a high speed drill mainly the angle drill so is uh, better uh, help in visualization under the microscope So and we mainly use the 4 mm round bar or a side cutting mesh stick bar curate with an angle curate to remove the ligamentum flammum and the carison we prefer mainly 2 to 3 mm carisons the caro carisons uh, rungers are mainly for the contralateral decompressions so these are from the contralateral decompression mainly we use the bayonet instrument to enhance the visibility under the microscope so the incision uses the image intensifier to determine the incision mainly 1.5 to 2 cm from the midline inferior mainly we address the spino uh, laminar junction and uh, the, the inferior inferior aspect of the superior lamina this this uh, slight more in, the incision is slightly more superior and lateral than the tubular microdiscectomy because we uh, go from the, uh, go to the opposite side for to decompress the other side so this is the uh, this is the point where we dog the this uh, first uh, uh, tubular dissector so we dog the tube attach the table attachment under the microscope so it's the first step first we start from the bone removal the begin the laminotomy on the approach side so this is the uh, laminotomy on the like in the lateral uh, l4 l5 level l4 lamina this is superior inferior medial and lateral so we start from the spinal laminar junction 
to begin the laminotomy on the approach side drill, drill to identify the ligamentum phloem on the approach side and remove the bone up to the superior attachment of the ligamentum phloem the second <coughs> to assess to the contralateral side we undercut the spinous process like in this image showing the with the help of a drill we undercut the spinous process so for the for uh, opposite side we need to angle the retractor or rotator the, rotate the patient and the bed away from the side then you are standing the ligamentum phlegm is helped to prevent the plugging of the drill in the confined space so it's better to avoid to remove the ligamentum phlegm till you reach the upper, uh, opposite side of the lamina this next step is to identify the superior aspect of the ligamentum phlegm attachment like in this uh, pic is the we remove, uh, we reach up to the superior attachment of the ligament because the lumbar canal stenosis mainly due to the ligamentum phlegm so remove the upper limit of the ligamentum phlegm provide an important landmark to confirm the superior limit of the decompression and at that level we slow the drill because the risk of damaging the dura at that level because dura is uh, the ligamentum phlegm is uh, absent at that level then step then the uh, then we first we start from the ipsi lateral side lateral this is decompression so, so uh, create enough room, uh, room on the ipsi lateral side so that the instrument can be safely introduced into the canal for the contralateral decompression so the first we decompress from the ipsi lateral side so it gives space for the contralateral decompression the partial medial facectomy or removal of the adequate facet hypertrophy on the approach side is necessary to expose the traversing roots so this picture showing we decompress on the same side then uh, decompress the central canal we remove the whole ligamentum from it like a heart shape this is the left side dura is the right side is the central uh, then decompress on the contralateral side of the canal the is uh, we tilt the table uh, to the opposite side and we decompress on the opposite side uh, lateral recess the potential it is a potential uh, danger aspect of the procedure which high risk of the dural injury and cerebral uh, csf leaks the right, the right handed prefer uh, surgeon mainly prefer for the left side so for the hemostat we use the bone wax and uh, we uh, uh, drain mainly mainly in the use in which we have a, a dural tear which are in repairable so the major uh, risk of ulbd is the risk of a pars thin or burr through this destabilize uh, the facet or produce from the stress fracture saying so the risk of a traversing nerve rotary risk of a dural tear is very less in ulbd so these are the steps so this is the case uh, the patient which have uh, central uh, lumbar canal stenosis with a degenerative scoliosis so this is the concave side this is the convex side if you go from the this uh, left side so we you required more uh, facectomy and uh, more so the high risk of damaging the facet so the, we go from the contralateral side to decompress the this side. so these are the pre operative and post operative which is showing the significant uh, this is the pre op lumbar canal stenosis showing the significant increase in the dural sec cross section area after the ulv so this is the second case which a grade one spondylolisthesis with lumbar canal stenosis we decompress from the uh, left side and the post operative we were showing the good uh, decompression of the canal so now the the recently <coughs> advantage in the ulbd is the this uh, endoscopic unilateral ulbd but the this study, these two studies shows the both the endoscopic and microscopic ulbd can provide favorable outcome for the lumbar canal stenosis However, the, uh, the endoscopy have an advantage of uh, less uh, chances of the segmental spine instability, pain, and uh, this less damage to the muscle. So this is the video. So, uh, we dug the tube under the microscope uh, with uh, the dissector <coughs> muscles and then we start uh, to expose the ipsilateral lamina this is the uh, cyclad is the right and left side so we are approaching from the left side then we start uh, drilling from the same side we drill the lamina up to the ligamentum phlegm attachment and we expose uh, we avoid to remove the ligamentum phlegm tilt which reach up to the contralateral side uh, lamina so uh, this is the picture showing uh, bilateral lam uh, laminotomy from the same side 
then we decompress from the FC lateral side. So this is the right side, this is the left side uh, ligamentum phlegm, this is the superior attachment of the ligamentum phlegm. So this So we remove the phlegm from the superior attachment. This is the phlegm. We remove the phlegm from the same superior attachment. So this is the dural sac on the ipsilateral side. Then we do the central decompression. So now uh, this is the heart shape picture. We're showing the both the side of the dural sac. This is the left and right side. So we decompress the opposite side. We first decompress the ipsilateral side. We then we decompress the opposite lateral releases under the microscopic guidance. Okay. So this uh, ULBD is a uh, mainly respect the posterior spinal integrity and musculature uh, uh, musculature equipping with the less blood loss, short operative hospital stay, short recovery period than the open laminectomy and safe and effective process for the lumbar clearance process. Thank you. Hello. As Dr. Manoj has to leave for the OT, we'll invite the question and answer discussion right now. Any questions for Dr. Manoj? Yeah, Dr. Manoj, I have a question for you. Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is regarding the size of the tube that you use. Sir, mainly uh, we use uh, 18 mm uh, tube, dilator tubes. Okay. 18 and 20 mm tubes, sir. And, and uh, the depth is dependent upon the patient uh, uh, muscular structure. Like in fatty, we use the 7 to 8. Uh, length and in the uh, this, uh, inpatient we use five to six m uh, in the length wise. In diameter wise, we mainly use the eighteen m. And does the uh, size of the hypertrophy of the facet actually help you to determine? Do you prefer a bigger tube when it, the facet is hypertrophied or a thinner tube? We yeah, use the same tube, sir. Find the same yes. tube. And for, this... to prevent the facet damage, we tilt the table uh, for like in the same side. And we, uh, when we decompress the same side, we tilt the table from same side, approaching side. Sir. Okay, and the second question is, what is the end point of your decompression on the contralateral side? Is it visual or is it feel no. using a probe? Sir, we remove uh, the ligamentum phlegm attachment up to the, uh, where the ligamentum phlegm attached up to the facet side. We feel, and uh, we also check the opposite side, uh, this uh, traversing nerve roots. So this, mainly the ligamentum phlegm uh, is attachment is the end point for the contralateral decompression. Okay, because, because the mainly compression is because of the ligamentum phlegm. Because there could be some amount of foraminal stonosis on the opposite side. So is it, do you just visualize it or do you, by tilting the microscope, or do you put a probe in there to feel it? So we, uh, from uh, ULBD, we mainly we reach up to the exit uh, entry zone. So if uh, we, we, uh, we mobilize the root in the foramen and uh, we up to the uh, this uh, traversing root down and just free the root and free any adhesions in the foramen. But not up to the mid zone, yeah, exit zone. Any other questions for Dr. Manoj? Okay, thank you, Dr. Manoj. We'd like to then uh, invite Dr. Amritlal Miskrenis, who's going to talk. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to uh, congratulate the orthopedic department of uh, Waidei Medical College on this wonderful CME and also thank you for giving me this opportunity. So the tubular microendoscopic discectomy is like an extension of a micro discectomy using a smaller incision. There are various locations for a lumbar 
for a lumbar disc herniation. Like there can be caudal migration, there can be far lateral discs, there can be foraminal stenosis, there could be inferior migration, but the commonest is that of a paracentral disc herniation. And a typical MRI will look like this. The axial section will show you a large disc, which is compressing on the traversing nerve root. The posterior interlaminar uh, approach is the commonest and the most familiar approach for doing a discectomy, where you uh, go through the interlaminar space posteriorly, go in, retract the nerve, and pick up the nerve root. It's a common surgery, simple surgery. It's a stepping stone for spine surgery. And over a period of time, it becomes a quick surgery. This discectomy has evolved. Oh, this, this discectomy has evolved over a period of time. Yeah, so from a laminectomy and a discectomy, then which can which can have a lot of soft tissue damage, to minimizing the incision and going doing a targeted approach, where and using a microscope, and then minimizing it even lesser and targeting only the nerve root because we know, and, and the area around it, because we know that the symptoms are created because of compression of one or two nerve roots. The operating microscope has improved magnification, illumination, and has facilitated a smaller incision. At the same time, using a tube has helped us in clear, in retracting the soft tissue, reducing the incision, and giving us a nice, easy, smooth passage into the epidural space to do our work through a narrow channel. So the advantage of which is that it is less painful, there is better healing between muscle and muscle, and it minimizes surgical scar tissue without compromising the outcome or destabilizing the spine. And that is the definition of an MIS surgery. So a uh, first step of an MIS surgery after a pedicle, I mean, other than a pedicle screw insertion is that of using a tube and using a tube for a simple discectomy. So this is a patient with an L45 disc, large disc, paracentral disc, 35 year old female, left lower limb pain with uh, compression of the nerve root with some deficits. Basically, we position the patient in the same way as that we position for a regular discectomy. There are many different ways in which people position, but you can position in the same usual way using bolsters, cushion all the bony prominences, make sure that the head, the face is also protected with uh, silicone uh, uh, pillows for, the, uh, for resting the face. And uh, if you do use a Wilson frame, you can open up the posterior interlamina space a little more than, uh, than uh, what you normally do with a regular bolster. But I prefer the first technique that is uh, the, the, this position because it leaves the abdomen really free. And I'm used to this, uh, to operating in this position. The device, the vital, uh, uh, instruments that you use for an endoscopic, a tubular endoscope is a guide wire and serial dilators. You use the serial dilators on the under image guidance so that you create a channel. The most important thing is to make sure that the guide wire is at the center of the, of the disc space so that you can dock the tube directly over the disc space. Anything big below or above it or in a different position will make your job a little more difficult to pass the uh, disc forceps into the disc space. So do the serial dilatation all the time, make sure that it is at the center of the disc space. And then you pass on around after dilating it sufficiently, you pass on the tube onto the and dock it onto the uh, on, on, onto the L45 disc space. Make sure that it is in the center and then attach it to the table through the fixing device and do all your work using a microscope. It is not to be done with a loop. Use a good microscope and do your work through it. There are certain changes you have to make in your instruments when you're using a tube. It's better to use bayoneted instruments, bayoneted dissectors, up cutters, as well as curettes. So a step-by-step -step exposure, uh, uh, I'll take you on in a stepwise manner through the procedure and then show you a video. This is the exposure. Make sure that all the soft tissue is removed. The, this is the lamina 
and that is the uh, that is the ligamentum interlaminar space there is some amount of lamina which is overhanging over this disc space in this particular case you remove the do a laminotomy and expose the ligamentum flavum this yellow area is the ligamentum flavum and then you incise the ligamentum flavum using a knife and a dissector and then you expose incise the flavum remove the flavum with upcutters and you expose the nerve root that's the nerve root and that is the epidural space you go on to retract the nerve root and expose the sequestrated disc and then you remove the disc using a regular disc forceps and go on to complete the decompression this is a very short video yeah so this is the lamina and that is the curette and then you use the up cutter and nibble off and do a laminotomy and expose the ligamentum flavum that's the yellow ligament oops sorry yeah that's the use the up cutter and do a laminotomy expose the ligamentum flavum incise the ligamentum flavum with a number 15 blade and then use a that's the incision a longitudinal incision on the ligamentum flavum but don't uh, spare the final fibers which you will separate out using a dissector and then use a kerisens punch to nibble off the flavum and expose the nerve root use always use bipolar cautery and you keep it at, uh, and uh, uh, and then retract the nerve root there, there you can see the nerve root being retracted and that is the disc which is uh, compressing the nerve root the sequestrated disc is teased out using a 90 degree angled probe and then a disc forceps is used to deliver the disc a few fragments are there then use the knife again a 15 number blade and incise put a cruciate incision timely use of cautery bipolar cautery is necessary to get a bloodless field here i'm using the up cutter to the, the kerisens punch to widen the opening of the uh, annulus to facilitate an easier discectomy the discectomy is done the pro, as well as a foramenotomy is done the 90 degree angle probe is passed along the foramen to confirm that there is adequate decompression wash is given a gel foam is placed and slowly retract the tube make sure that there are no bleeders and then close the incision the entire surgery can be done with a 16 mm tube hospital stay of one day with absolutely very little blood loss so which is a better surgical technique that is very very debatable you can do the same job using different techniques small wounds faster means faster patient recovery and earlier hospital discharge is there an actual clinical outcome uh, in improvement in clinical outcomes is it cost effective uh, to achieve that marginal benefit that is the debate there is no level one evidence to prove the superiority of one technique over the other but then again training and exp it, the the technique that you use depends on your training your expertise and the resources available in your hospital some form of magnification is definitely used and if you actually want to do a nice tubular endoscopic discectomy you can do it at low cost also so that that is not a limiting factor it's an elegant way of doing a discectomy provided you choose your patients well it's a steep learning curve with initially uh, cumbersome but until you get fluency in the work then it becomes faster microscope and illumination dependent and uh, specific instruments are also required microendoscopic discectomies are have all the benefits of mis small incision less blood loss less tissue damage it's a nice stepping stone for you to get tuned into minimally invasive surgeries some you pay attention to some instruments make sure that you have a good microscope thank you very much thank you dr amrutlal 
I request uh, Dr. Puneet to come onto the stage for the next talk, which is on MISTLIF. Yeah, I think uh, this was by design that I have to take the last talk in every session. It makes my life so much easier. Most of the anatomy and the procedures have already been described. So Dr. Mascarenas had made my life easy uh, by explaining the entire MIS procedure through a tube. So I, as he already told, it's a stepping stone. So the minimal invasive or the MED or micro MTD, the microtubular discectomy is the stepping stone moving on to the T lift procedures through the tube. The, what is MIS actually? It is a surgery that is done less invasively. The goal is same as open. Approach or access to the spine is less morbid. There are smaller incisions, lesser muscle trauma. So as I earlier said, minimal access surgery would probably more be more accurate because you, you don't end up doing a half job. You don't want an inadequate decompression. So Inside the canal, you have to do the same job, whether you do an open surgery or a minimal invasive surgery. There's no way you can uh, compromise on that. Traditional fusion without instrumentation had high failure. We, then the advent of instrumentations increased it significantly above 80%. And then the, uh, the history was changed with the Jurgen Harms and his team getting uh, in the early 90s, the T-lift procedures, which are uh, having close to 100% uh, fusion rates because of the compression surface uh, for interbody techniques and because of the uh, the vast surface area and uh, grafting in in the anterior zone traditionally they used to use have an anterior and posterior approach so why mist lift what are the indications and what are the limitations that's what we need to understand before we move on to the technique the indications per se are same like for any other open T lift procedures, spondylolisthesis, any instability, either vertical or post decompression, any uh, third time or more recurrent disc herniation, which, which will be a plus minus significant back pain, poor was score. Degenerative disc disease with intractable discogenic back pain have exhausted all other means of uh, treating it. So just a case example, degenerative lysthesis grade one with instability, uh, disc degeneration is there, root canal stenosis, L5 right side, festal degenerative cyst with impingement on the right L5 nerve root. So typically unilateral symptoms, degenerative lysthesis as, as shown on the x-rays. Patient needs a fusion procedure, uh, probably an ideal case for, uh, is one of the very early cases which I have shown uh, in some national meetings, the MIS for beginners is one of the uh, early cases to select for a uh, discectomy would be L5-S1 left side for a right-handed and a minimal invasive t lift would be an L4-5 and a degenerative grade 1 slip with significant discal height. So it will make life easy for somebody who starts in. So I think doc Dr. Maskaran has already mentioned the, uh, the significance of uh, having the correct uh, microsurgical technique. You need a good illumination magnification. Loop is an alternative, but microscope will score uh, the best. And access strategy is muscle splitting. So we're going through the muscle. We are not stripping it off the bone. The healing is much faster, easier. The back pain is less. The imaging is of utmost important in, importance in any instrumentation in, in, uh, in a uh, MIS technique because your only output that you have is interoperatively is the X-ray. You can't see inside the way uh, you can do in an open surgery. So radiological correlation to the anatomy is uh, very, very important. Instrumentation in implants already mentioned, bayonet shaped instruments. You need uh, retractors or tubes. You need high speed, high speed drill or a bar. So percutaneous, these are the steps uh, going into the technique of MIST lift. You uh, can do a percutaneous pedicle guide wire insertion initially to avoid any uh, inadvertent injury if you do it at the last after having a done a decompression. Tubular retractor access, decompression, interbody fusion, put in a cage or bone graft or whatever uh, one prefers. 
and pedicle screw insertions at the end and then the rod, pass, rod passage. So similar to the percutaneous fixation technique, you have to go through the same steps. We have already covered that, how to put in your, throw in your screw. This is something standard that we, it is being used that if you're doing a discectomy, a 1.5 centimeter away, you're doing a uh, peel if you're uh, 2.5 centimeters away, pedicle screw is 3.5 to 4, and T-lift would be 4.5 centimeter away from the midline. This is for your surface marking. Once you have the uh, uh, skin access, then you aim towards the facet joint line, the highest point of the facet joint line. You are more medial than lateral, otherwise you'll end up struggling uh, doing your work because you're tilting the table so much and your neck is bending so much. So are more medial than lateral. 10 mm uh, dilator banding around the facet capsule helps a lot. You can use a scissor also, uh, initially creating a space around the facet. You do the finger test just to check it, reduce your radiation, slightly longer tube. So if you have, uh, have a dilator, they have the surface, they have the markings on the uh, sequential dilators. So if it's showing uh, 50 mm depth, you uh, end up taking 60 mm. So one centimeter larger than the, uh, than the surface mark of the highest diameter of the dilator. So if this is the largest dilator for a 20 mm tube, if this is 18, whatever is the surface marking, you take one centimeter more than that. Check it on AP, check it on lateral. We all understand on the lateral, it should be parallel to the upper half of the, uh, uh, up, the upper end plate or the lower half of the disc space. On the AP, uh, we are targeting the interlaminar interval. This is a very, very important slide just to understand what you will see inside. Because like in open surgery, we, we, we don't come in from the lamina. So here you are directly docking onto the facet. So it's a lateral to medial anatomy, not a medial to lateral anatomy. So you end up seeing what you see inside is that you see an L4 inferior articular process. You can burr a little bit, define your uh, joint line. You have L5, L5 superior articular process. There is a disc underlying uh, somewhere in this. As you move cutting onto the superior articular process, you will see that the course of the traversing nerve root is going like that. If you, if you see the, the traversing nerve root is somewhere here beneath the middle border of the superior articular process. So this anatomy is of utmost importance during your MIS procedure. At all times, you have to be oriented cranial, caudal, medial, lateral, whatever you're doing. You know where your traversing route is. You should know where your exiting nerve route is. You should know where really the, uh, the uh, superior border of the pedicle. So that is what you, how you define your Cambin's triangle. Uh, there is a traversing route on, on one side, exiting on the other side in the L5 end plate or the superior aspect of the lower pedicle. You go in, do a discectomy, a standard discectomy, what you do. Uh, you can use a 90 degree to retract the thecal sac and the traversing route, go on the shoulder, remove, do a discectomy, do your interbody spacers, get an appropriate uh, feel, uh, sequential uh, shavers we will see in the live surgery also and later in the cadaveric also. You can do it for multi-level, uh, nowadays the manual rotting has made it much easier. Just a question for the uh, students out there is Cambin's triangles boundaries, if anybody wants to take it uh, at L45. Which is the which is the exception out here? Which is the wrong one? A, B, C, D. Anyone? Cambin triangles boundaries at L4, L4, 5. Exiting root L5, traversing root L5, exiting L4, L5 pedicle. Anybody wants to take this question? So the correct answer is A. The uh, the exiting root L5 will go below the L5 pedicle. So. Traversing root L5 would make the medial boundary, the superior lateral boundary would be exiting L4 and L5 pedicle would be the inferior boundary. So just, just a catch there that to understand that anatomy at all times is very, very important. Other spinal pathologies, if are not addressed, there can be a persistent back pain. That is always a topic of debate, not getting into it because of the workshop and the focus is on the technique. Aims is to achieve the same degree of relief of the neurogenic symptoms. So we're not compromising on neural decompression at all. Shorter hospitalization, everything in the shorter uh, uh, term, the, you improve the uh, outcomes for the short term. Collateral damage in, in open approach, possibly minimal invasive will improve the relief of back pain. We've already discussed the advantages of minimal invasive. Lots of literature supporting minimal invasive, uh, favoring MIST lift, significant p-value showing uh, in a large series of thousand, close, close to 800 cases that you know, um, that, that the post-operative uh, the, and the intraoperative blood loss, both are less in MIS. Similarly, for the analgesic usage, we at our center use an intrathecal morphine for all instrumentations of interbody level. We use intrathecal morphine one time, and we've done a thesis for close to 200 cases, and uh, we have significant relief. All those patients are mobilized next day morning without any aid. 
So that, that's like to reduce the infection, one time injection, and we use morphine, 0.4 and 0.8 mg. And uh, length of hospital stay certainly uh, significantly favoring MIST lift. The uh, usual stay is like two days. We have a package for two to three days usually, and nobody stays more than three days. And uh, all these patients can get admitted on the day of surgery in the morning. You know, they do all the pre-operative pre work because hospitals are expensive to stay and to do pre-operative workup. So they just come in for the surgery and then post-surgery, they just go, go on the second day back home. So we all understand the cross-sectional area of the multifid is so much important for the extension muscle strength and uh, percentage of improvement in uh, leg pain is uh, similar for both open or MIS. Perhaps, perhaps better uh, ODI scores and better imp uh, lower VAS scores post-operative. Uh, some studies show significant difference for back pain because of the MIS procedure. So MIS technique potentially has all except. So another question to be taken up, less blood loss, more radiation exposure, longer hospital stay, less muscle pain. So which is the correct answer? Which is the exception here? MIS technique has less blood loss, yes. More radiation exposure, yes. Longer hospital stay, no. So the C is the answer. We have a shorter hospital stay. So what are the perils? You know, every technique comes with a prolonged operative time initially, but trust me, I've moved on uh, in a decade over from open to minimal. My operative times with MIS are much, much lesser than the open now. The learning curve initially, yes, very steep. I completely understand difficulty in achieving multiple level fusion also and limited ability in deformity correction. OLIF's OLIF technique or the anterior techniques will help you in getting deformity correction. TLIF will, is not the ideal for getting deformity correction. So this is from neurosurgical focus telling that MIS to become a routine practice, you need at least 30 cases per year, 20, 30 surgeries to become familiar. And still, if you see the complication rate was high initially, it took five years to come down to a standard level. Apart from that, the complication rates are much less in MIS. The only thing in favor of open tea leaf would be here a radiation exposure. It's completely agreeable. So take home message, excellent recovery in the short term. We understand the limitations. Be prepared to convert to open initially. I haven't done one ever in my life. I've never converted a MIS to open. I probably I didn't feel the need. A correct indication to be identified beforehand and you respect the learning curve. Just a short video, two minutes. No, we have to go to the VLC. Close. Yeah. Open with VLC. The lighting flip L45. Nothing much in the canal. You see that? I think brightness. Yeah. Okay. It's moving, huh? Eh? Is it moving? It's playing, but the video is not moving. Yeah, now. So we see that uh, there is a lysis here, L45 lytic slip, good discal height. So you have your surface landmarks, you identify the midline, you uh, draw your uh, lateral, ped either uh, two centimeter away from the lateral pedicular line on the CM, or I draw it 4.5 centimeter away from the midline. Throw in your Jamshedi needle. Look at the. Uh, uh, the Ferguson view, this is a true AP fluoroscopic image. The end plate isn't oval. The pedicles are equidistant from the midline. So you have you have your AP view and, and then you go in, throw your guide wires, at least on the side of decompression first. But I prefer to throw in all the guide wires in one go. And then that's, that's the time to dock your tube on the side of your symptoms. Uh, if you have uh, one side more than the other, 
but you can do like a like a ulbd you can do a bilateral decompression you can do over the to top you can do the mobilization of the opposite nerve root you can do everything what you can do for a uninstrumented spine lumbar canal stenosis you can do everything through this if you are planning a bilateral decompression for a for an mist lift then uh, your incision has to be a little more medial so you have to be a little careful you know you have to go in between the uh, the interlaminar incision and the fascicular incision so if you see that uh, now it's a cranial caudal medial lateral i'm standing at this end and uh, we are possibly in a prone position operating on the left side so you can do a uh, you can bar in and and identify this is the superior articular process that is being removed you can use your all hand instruments you can use a osteotome you can use garrisons um preferably not bar the entire thing because your uh, graft would be much less in that case so you can see the ligamentum flavum out there so your exiting route is somewhere here in a, in such a good discal height at l45 you are not bothered about you don't even need to see in this degen list this is grade 1 but at uh, uh, if you have a foraminal stenosis or at l5s1 you have a very straight root coming in you better be very careful so once you remove the uh, ligamentum flavum you have the entire dural sac to yourself you can see the traversing root also being retracted you can use your bipolar to cauterize at the upper border of the pedicle stay closer to the uh, caudal area you will be safer that way and then bring in your uh, inner knife do a discectomy as usual the entire thecal sac you are on the shoulder is being retract to, retracted to the other side throw in your shavers curettes sequentially remember uh, uh, that uh, do not use very aggressively the shavers because that can thin the end plate and can eventually cause an be very careful in osteoporotic patients where you have those fish mouth biconcave so you can actually shave in a lot so uh, and then you can end up uh, those cages being sinking inside so once you have done the sizing you throw in your cage check it on the ap lateral thorough wash now checking for all those bone fragments you know that is very important i have actually come back on a sunday afternoon to once do that because a patient had uh, could, was not even able to stretch the leg after the surgery so i had to come back and uh, it was a small fragment and trap beneath the traversing root and uh, magical relief once you do that but the entire exercise of the pain of taking the patient again to the theater it's not good for the patient it can increase infection rate it can also hamper your image so this is how uh, rod insertion would be done all the modern instrumentations have manual rod insertion you can design your lordosis uh, what you want on the table and then you can bend it accordingly contrast to the first generation where there was a pre bent rod which had to go through a jig so you can design it so you can do it on one side in case of uh, irreducible listhesis i'll try i i i prefer to do a bilateral facetectomy i try to do uh, simultaneous insertion of the rod but in this case lytic slip completely reducible on positioning you don't need to do much this is the thrill part so these uh, these this monolock system from jeon now has uh, extended tab so you can after completing the procedure you can just it's like a break off you just remove them they are not uh, attachable extenders so i think we will now move on to the life surgery and then we will see the entire process again thank you very much thank you dr punit uh, the session is open for discussion so are there any questions for dr amrit and dr punit please go ahead Sir, it was a very nice, excellent presentation. More for the for my specialty, like psychiatry, is very interesting. 
And what I was uh, trying to draw the attention is the learning curve you are talking about. Mm -hmm. You gave a number around 30. Mm -hmm. So to improve the learning curve, these days we are talking of simulation. We are talking mm -hmm. of cadaveric uh, thing. Anyway, in the workshop also it is there. What is your comment about that? Before the person goes with knowledge, skill for application directly on the human being, the role of cadaver and role of simulation techniques in improving the quality of the surgeon directly on the human being. I, I think I completely agree. I can't, uh, I can't agree more than this, is that if you have uh, paid attention, this study was from 2005 to 2010. So those five years and now 2020 to 25 would be an entirely different ballgame. Now with the internet being a sensation, you have videos all over, you have the learning curve has become much smaller. So I would actually not uh, really stick to that one. I have gone through that time. So I understand the pain of going through it. You have to really find a center at that time where you would go and then you will apply and then you'll keep waiting for your turn. Just to go for a five days course to Singapore, it took me like two years. Like, you know, someday I will go and I will learn. But today that is not true. There are YouTube videos and there are so many fellowships and there's so many centers doing, having now it is becoming, a spine is becoming as a separate unit. So they're all having microscopes. They're all having newer technology. So earlier it was a part of orthopedics or a neuro. So the challenges were more. I think simulation still is it's in its early phase. And now with the, um, uh, the we had a demonstration uh, from California. Some guy came and he was showing those uh, um, VR, VR system to, you know, you can actually train yourself on the VR system sitting at home. They are impl implementing it in medical colleges also. Simulation is not available at many centers still in India. I think this is a very good center and uh, one center close to Gurgaon has a very good simulation lab. And then you have to apply all those softwares, etc. And somebody has to drive that program. But simulation will, I think, change the whole game. And this, this is going to be much quicker. Another thing is the fellowship programs. I think short-term fellowships is a very good exposure now that you have in those uh, one month, two month, three months, uh, we, can, we can learn a lot. Uh, and the numbers have also gone up. So there's a major bulk uh, of cases that one can observe in a short duration. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Puneet. The discussion can go on in uh, different sessions. Since we are short of time, we will uh, go to the next program. We'll continue discussion uh, at personal level. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sirs. Uh, we request Dr. Madan Temkar to give memendos to Dr. Ahmed Lal Maskranas. We also request Dr. Vijay Kamat to present the memento to Dr. Puneet Girida. Okay. So now we request Dr. Ashwini Kumar Singh, President, Karnataka Orthopedic Association, to come to the dais and give our moderators mementos. Please give it to Madan Temkar. Kindly uh, give it to our. Give it to Dr. Vijay Kamath. So with this, we come to the end of the second session. Now we'll have the inauguration ceremony. Now we invite guests and other dignitaries to today's function.
Uh, we request all the delegates to stay back for the inauguration ceremony. After that, we will break for the uh, refreshments. After the inauguration ceremony, all the delegates can uh, get kindly register for the cadaveric workshop and get the consent from the team. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now we invite guests and other dignitaries to today's function and to occupy the distinguished chairs on the dais. May I invite chief guest of today's CME, Dr. Mahesh Kothapalli, infectious disease specialist, advisor to Vaidhi Institute and chairman of HSCC on the dais. We have Two guests of honors for today. It's our privilege to invite Dr. Ashwani Kumar Singh, President of Kannada Orthopedic Association, to grace the dais. I request Dr. Vanabali Sita Ram, President, Bangalore Orthopedic Society, to come to the dais. I'm glad to invite Dr. Prabhakar Ji, Dean Wims RC, to the dais. Next, we look forward for the presence of Dr. Durga Prasad Reddy. Uh, Chairman, MEC, Wims and RC on the dais. Uh, the next dignitary to, the, uh, to honor us with the presence is uh, Dr. Sridhar Venkatesh, Principal, Wims and RC. Kindly come to the dais. Uh, we are glad to invite me the medical, uh, medical superintendent, Dr. Uma Maheshwar, Wims and RC to the dais. Uh, uh, no, uh, I, I invite Dr. Uh, Hiranya Kumar S, organizing chairman of the CME, onto the dais. Uh, let us begin today's event with invocation, uh, invocation of Almighty. For that reason, I would like to call upon Dr. Pradeep, junior resident, Department of Orthopedics, to lead us in a prayer with melodious worship song. Uh, I request all, all of you to stand for the invocation song.
Take your seat. Uh, now I request Dr. Hiranya Kumar S, organizing chairman of the CME, HOD Department of Orthopedics, uh, to welcome the chief guest and the dignitaries on the dais. Good morning, everyone. A very warm, warm welcome to everyone present here. I first pay my pronouns to be late for the chairman, Madhikesh Kunayaku and Satyabhav Madhikesh Kunayaku. Today, the CME is on uh, minimally invasive surgical procedures in spine of thoracic and spine. The idea of conducting this CME began with the realization that uh, most of the surgeons are not getting up to date, getting up to date because of the lack of exposure and training. Uh, keeping in this mind, uh, we conduct, we are planning to have a old age CME with lectures, the life surgery, cadaveric workshop, and all top room. And also, our program is being streamed worldwide in the Arco TV, where a lot of people are getting benefited. Uh, I would like to thank Mrs. Kalpaja, our chairperson, the Bairai Group of Institute, for our support and uh, encouragement for our department. Due to her prior commitments, she was unable to attend this program. Uh, our gratitude uh, to Madam. Next, I would like to welcome Dr. Mahesh Kotakali. Uh, infectious disease specialist, Texas USC, advisor to Wings and uh, RP and Wider Group of Institution, who is the chief guest of the program. Next, I would like to welcome our guest, Ashwini Kumar Nayak, is the president of KOF, KOF Karnataka Authority for Association. Dr. Vanamali Sitaraman, the president of the Grand Society. 
Next, I would like to welcome Dr. G. Prabhakar, the Dean of Bhairavi Institute of Madhya Pradesh. Dr. Durga Prasad Reddy, Chairman of uh, Medical Academy Council, Professor and Director of Body Hospital. Dr. Sridhar Mantish, Principal of Bhairavi Institute of Medical Sciences. Dr. Uma Maheshwar, Medical Superintendent of I would like to welcome our uh, hospital administrator, Dr. Ravi Babu, Vice Chairman, MEC Committee, Dr. Vice Sarkar, all the MEC members, MEC members, all the HODs, professors, faculties, and postgraduates. I would like to also welcome the faculties and moderators of this Maestro uh, CME. And uh, I wish all the postgraduates and the same spine surgeons who have a great learning experience. experience. Thank you. Deepak, Jodi or Job, which represents Agni, the lighting of a lamp, which removes darkness, ignorance, unhappiness, spreading the Almighty's grace. Light is a universal symbol of truth, knowledge, and understanding. It acts as a guide, keeping us from stumbling in the dark. Kindly rise for lighting of the lamp. We invite all the dignitaries on the dais for the lighting of the lamp. Please rise. Uh. Dr. Prabhakar Ji to declare the CME and the workshop open. CME on minimal breast and the thoracic and the spine, as well as the live surgery workshop, cadaveric dissection, which has been organized by this our Department of Optics, Edit Way Dr. Rajin. I also would like to congratulate the department have taken this live surgery, which is very important for a surgical speciality to obtain the surgical procedures. I would, like, uh, I, mean, I would like also to thank all the distinguished faculty, especially the faculty who have come from all the from Delhi, to go as your techniques. I wish all the best for this CME surgical workshop to be a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. 
Now we request our advisor and chief guest for the day, Dr. Mahesh Kothupalli, to address the gathering. Personally, um, I'm a specialist, a specialist, and I have a great relationship with the uh, orthopedic surgeons. I am basically orthopedic surgeon. But you know what? Infection. And my business thrives thanks to you guys. And I'm not coming uh, from uh, post op infections. Thanks for the business. Um, at the same time, I'm going to be using the importance of uh, infections in orthopedics. So be careful. Uh, we have a, a lot of uh, cases that go bad because of the infections. I hope you don't get any infections. So wish you all the best. Uh, thank you, sir, for your wishes and motivating words. Uh, now, we, I, I invite uh, today's chief guest, uh, guest of honor, Dr. Ashwini Kumar Singh, president of Karnataka Orthopedic Association, to speak a few words. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I would say that congratulate the Department of Orthopedics on the Uh, hopefully, it's with a trend in this year, but unfortunately, we are already getting into some wave. And, uh, this has been needed away most of the uh, things what we actually be, have learned. We have been uh, doing all these things virtually, and uh, the webinars, I think uh, people have not as much joke about the webinars. And so many jokes are there about the webinars, but we are not speak about that. But anyway, hands on workshops and uh, live circuits are the most important thing in that. Uh, like our chief guest was telling, uh, the main uh, issue with the orthopedics is the infection. And of course, uh, the main topic of today is also like that. Uh, we have come from the formal surgery to the minimum invasive to the uh, mini incisions to the endoscopic surgeries. And uh, practically, when you uh, say, sir, that the infection rate is very minimal with the advances which we have done. And hopefully, it will be like that. I just want to tell one uh, instance when uh, I was doing my research in Bombay. I think one of the, I was working in a Catholic hospital office, and uh, one of the father uh, he was carrying uh, a surgery. It was so difficult for him. After the surgery, he came with walking cane. He was very had been in pain for a long duration. He wanted to have surgery, but his life became very miserable. Miserable after surgery. The reason for the infection. It was uh, very difficult for us to eradicate the infection until we started walking for one or two years. I think, uh, rightly said by our chief guest, that should be the main uh, villain for our uh, organization. And I hope uh, that uh, we should be modern uh, ways of managing our uh, cases in the minimizing this case. And uh, at the same time, we can thank uh, all the organizers of the for inviting me. And uh, we wish all the best for us. Thank you, sir, for your enlightening speech. Uh, thank you, dear guests, dignitaries on the dais and off the dais for your time and patience. We are extremely privileged to ha have you all here today. I would request all the dignitaries on the dais, delegates and guests to proceed for refreshments. We'll have a tea break now and be back in another 15 minutes for the most awaited live surgery. Thank you. I request to the delegates kindly uh, get registered for the cadaveric workshop and kindly uh, sign the consent form. You want to check it? You want to move the mic or something? This is the microscope. We can open it, no? Yeah. 
Hmm. So they are having a tea break after the inauguration. Should we wait or start? Okay. I had my tea. I'm okay, but my only concern is that if they are not seeing, because everything starts from the surface. No, that's okay. You call Dr. Hiranya and ask, can we start? He will tell you. Are you sure the patient is more symptomatic on the left? Check. Hello, hello. Right more than left. That's what I'm asking again and again because right more than left. I think we should go by right. Yeah, right. Check. Hello, hello. Check. Check. Hello. Hello. Check. Check. Hello. And the moderate Hello? Che. Hello? Shit. Shit. Hello? Oh, okay, sir. Oh, Martin, sir. Hello? Hello, hello, Dr. Sunil. Hello, can you hear me, Sunil? Hello. Hello, Ajit sir. That's your Akshay sir. We can hear you. Audio, audio connect model. Mother, mother. Hello, Dr. Sunil. Can you hear me? Sunil. Yeah, yeah, I'm checking. Mm. Dr. Sunil? I can hear you, Ajit. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. We can hear you. Um, uh, you'll be, uh, people, all of delegates have gone for a tea break. We'll be back in five minutes. So ask the surgeons to give us five minutes. We'll be back. Okay, sure, sure. We finished our, uh, this one just now. Yeah, we have painted and draped. Once oh. you're okay, we'll go. Uh, yeah, I will tell you. I'll give it to Karthik, sir. Okay. Okay. Sunil? Sir? Yeah, once uh, delegates are in the hall, we will con contact you back. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. Yes. Are you ready with the PPT and all that for uh, presenting the history? We are ready, sir. But uh, delegates, one mile, I guess. Allah, delegates, one mile, healthy, you know. New will be prepared. Sure, sir. Okay. 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 
हेलो चंद्रना चंद्रना हेलो चंद्रना जना हेलो आड़े बरत हाँ आड़े बरत क्लियर आगे हाँ क्लियर आगे इन मार्किंग करना तब तक ठीक एंड मार्किंग सियाम पे भी फैसेट चेक कर लो तब तक आप सियाम भी चेक हो जाएगा Yeah. Uh, once we do an AP view, this one here. What is that? Spirit. Yes, yes. We can demonstrate. Just that time will be a little bit of a constraint. One second. Let me dry it off. It won't be comfortable otherwise, man. No? Yeah, give me another towel. Yeah, that would be better. Yeah. Is his name Dr. Sunil? Yes. Sunil. He is your associate. He is associate. Yeah, sir. Sir. Dr. Sunil, and. वरुण डॉक्टर वंशी ठीक है या या दैट इज नाइस दैट इज नाइस दैट इज नाइस सो देर इज वन कैमरा विच कैन मूव टू द सी एम नो दिस कैमरा दिस कैमरा कैन बी मूव ना समबडी हियर ना जब बोलेंगे तब Actually, I hurt my finger while swimming. So, okay. happens. It's okay.
7 and a half. मॉर्निंग मैडम I'll uh, request all the delegates to kindly come to the main hall. We'll start off with the live surgery. This is all are ready. Time. All the surgeons, Dr. Puneet Girdhar and Dr. Manoj Kumar, is ready with the patient. Hmm. Have to move they have already the draped. And I uh, now request Dr. Vijay Kamath, Dr. Vijay Kamath, Dr. Amritwal Baskrinas, and Dr. Yogesh Pithwa, please to come to the dais and moderate this section. So, which which camera here? Which camera here? No, take the CM further up. Doctor Sunil. Yeah, doctor. Doctor Sunil will moderate from OT. There's a block. There's a block. Now, Sunil, you can briefly present the case. We are all delegates have started coming to the hall. You can start. Am I audible, Doctor Ajit? Just move the camera. Am I audible, Doctor Ajit? Yes, you are audible. Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning and welcome all for the live surgery session. We are in the operation theatre. The Perfect. Am I sure the cranial is... line? Cranial line. Check, okay, check. This is the cranial Can you hear me? Line. This is the caudal. This is your side. This is my side. The cranial and my. Okay. Done. Can you hear me, Doctor Ajit? Yes. Uh, Doctor uh, Vijay. Sunil, one minute. Dr. Vijay Kamath, Dr. Amritlal Maskrinas, and Dr. Yogesh Pithwa, three are, both, all three are there at the stage. They are the moderators for this session. Dr. Sunil, you have to talk, uh, call one of them, talk to them. Yeah. Good morning, all. Uh, uh, welcome to the line surgery. We are in the operation theater. Today, the patient, a uh, 44-year-old female, housewife by occupation, she came to us with a history of yeah. low back pain. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Please uh, continue. Complaints of low back pain since eight years with radiculopathy uh, for the last five years. The pain has been uh, increasing uh, uh, from the last. Did we do head up, head up. And with the more mechanical animal. work, the pain is increasing with bending forward, lifting weight and all. And with rest and medication, the pain was decreasing. Okay. Uh, You're patient, not breaking the table, no? Patient had. Uh, Radiculopathy more to the yeah. right side Perfect. compared to the and left then side. And then for a lateral view, we'll have to and, lift the table up. Uh, it is ex uh, extending up to the, the floor. entire table up, please. We want it to go up. Yeah. I'm audible. No, no, no. We are okay. We just need the height. Yeah. Dr. Sunil, uh, we are having a lot of uh, interference. I think okay. so many people are uh, talking in the background. Okay. So. You start now, yeah. You start now? Yes, please. Yes, sir. A 44 year old female patient, housewife by occupation, she came to the, us with a complaint of low back pain since eight years with the radiculopathy for the last five years. And uh, she has been uh, like having this back pain, which is insidious in onset and uh, gradually progressive. And uh, with all the mechanical work, like bending forward and household work, the pain has been increasing. With rest and uh, medication, initially she was fine, but now the pain relief is not uh, sufficient. And radiculopathy is more on the right side uh, compared to the left side, and which is extending to the foot. That is since last five years. But for the last six months, the walking distance is less than 500 meters. Uh, she has to rest, and after that, she'll be able to walk. That is the thing. Uh, there are no bowel or bladder uh, involvement. Uh, no neurological symptoms, motor or sensory, and the patient has no trauma or no other constitutional symptoms. 
on examination uh, power sensory power ladder everything was normal and uh, uh, on a spine examination i think we can see the x ray now is x ray uh, put up there yes yes sunal is yeah. there uh, we can make out there is a grade one listesis of l5 uh, 4s1 on and it shows instability which is lytic uh, listesis okay. and uh, on mri also we can make out the grade one listesis whereas axial cuts uh, there is minimal canal stenosis it so the patient has more of mechanic with the uh, present uh, hypertrophy and uh, fluid sign uh, on l45 and s1 so it's more of instability with the minimal canal stenosis at l5 s1 so i'll hand over to uh, the team so they are going ahead and they'll be showing the first the markings and the surgical incision so over to you sir okay i'll do that shoot please Okay. Now we can move a little away. Little down. That's it. No, go down. Go down. Move up, please. Up, please. Okay. So we start here. Can I have the marker and the scale here? So am I audible? Where do I hear them? Hello, Prajit. Yeah. Hello. Can I hear from the auditorium, from the seminar hall? I can hear. So we, we begin, we just uh, identify the spinous process. You use a thumb and an index finger to catch the entire scout thing. Dr. Pune? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is Dr. Amrit Lal. Dr. Vijay and Dr. Yogesh here moderating. Fantastic. So can, I can hear you very well. Yeah. So uh, can you tell me, uh, give us a brief idea as to your decision making on the side which you're going to do the facetectomy and what your surgical plan is? Uh, the, uh, I have been informed that this patient has predominantly right-sided symptoms, much more than the left-sided. But since it is a lytic slip and we and the symptoms are more dynamic. So practically the side doesn't matter. Our, uh, as a uh, uh, protocol, we try to uh, do the decompression from the side, which is more symptomatic. Right. But there is a, because of the lysis, there is an anteroposterior stenosis uh, because of the lysis and the listesis. So we are expecting some reduction here and increase in the discolite that should indirectly decompress the other side also. Right. Any tips uh, that you would want to offer? Because, you know, when we position, particularly for an S1 screw, there would be a lot of, you know, caudal angulation. So do you, would you want to offer any tips to the audience as to how to try to reduce that in positioning? So a couple of tips is that, uh, as you can see, the uh, significant uh, focal lordosis at the uh, affected level so a reverse Strandenberg uh, positioning is very important. Otherwise, uh, working in the microscope and with your CM, you'll be bending yourself a lot of uh, uh, bent in the craniocaudal di direction. So the first thing we have done is trying to neutralize uh, the, the vertebra to the floor. So we have, we have done a little bit of reverse Strandenberg. That is very important. And the other aspect is if you, if you have a focal lordosis like this, and you are expecting your uh, pedicle screw extenders to collide behind. So then it is better to target the lower half of the pedicle in the sacrum, and then you direct the screw towards the promontory. We can see that you have drawn a lot of lines over there. Could you just explain them to us? Yeah, I will do that. And I'll quickly move on, considering the time would be a major factor. So, uh, the, uh, first of all, we have drawn the midline. You want to see or I... The spinous process. 
uh, as a stout process in the midline between the sound and the index finger and have marked it at three different places and connected these dots. So that, that actually is our uh, midline. The next step that we have done is drawn a lateral pedicular line. So that, that has been done with the help of the image intensifier. Can we focus on the image intensifier? Previous image, previous image. Can you move the camera on the image intensifier? Previous, previous image, previous. Yeah, previous, previous. No, after that, I think he hasn't saved it. Yeah, here, here. That is enough. That is enough. That is enough. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. So if is the camera on the CM? Can we get one camera on the image intensifier? The monitor. Or you can bring the monitor in front of the camera. Either way, yeah, that should be okay. Dr. Yogesh, can you see the uh, monitor of the CM? Yes, yes, we can. I think he's not audible. They can see, no? Yes, we can see it. Yeah, if you can see that we have drawn uh, two, uh, there's the two uh, guide wires on the either side of the pedicle. Those that we are trying to define the lateral pedicular line for the affected level. The audio video guys, please try to zoom that in because that's being seen as an insect. Can you zoom in, if you zoom can in, make, zoom make in that as the main uh, video. Uh, announcement for yeah, the which audience. in this case is roughly uh, roughly two and a half cent this patient is very lean and thin and a narrow frame so the lateral particular line is not very far from the midline and in this particular patient i will not go very far away maybe 0.5 or 1 centimeter maximum away from the lateral particular line because the patient is so thin if i go further away i might struggle you know in from the uh, lateral trajectory so you plan to do an over the top contralateral decompression also? Not really. No. Not okay. really. In that case, I would rather remain a little more lateral. So we start. Uh, any we questions the from the audience? Yeah. You can walk up to the mic. There are mics in the center, the aisle. So that you can walk up to the not mic audible. and ask your question, please. We are going ahead with surgery now, sir. Yeah. Okay. Can you bring in the CM? Yeah. Okay. Can you bring it here, CM? Okay. Okay. Can we get a CM shot? Yeah. Yeah, so can you just zoom in here? So you can see uh, on the image intensifier, we are trying to save some, some shots here. We're working simultaneously. Uh, one difference you will notice between the left image and the right image is that the interlaminar space has increased. That's because of the reverse Trendelenburg that we have done. So the, the overlap has reduced now. My knife is sitting on the lateral particular line on the right side, which is the more symptomatic side, while Dr. Manoj has had a uh, uh, Jamshedi needle, but that's on the surface on the left side. Do you, do you suggest a, a local infiltration with adrenaline or anything? You try to use that as that is, routine practice in, in your practice? That is something you can do. Not always that we do. 
but uh, uh, a lidocaine with adrenaline can be injected to uh, have a better hemostasis. But once the tube is docked, after that it would not be a concern. But towards the end, it is better to infiltrate for post-op management, pain management. How is the BP? How is the BP? Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a little high. You bring it down. Uh, what is it now? 80. Around uh, 70. 80. Yeah. So one trick, no, no, we don't need that. So one trick we are playing here is, can you bring the camera, camera, can you, camera is there, no? So one trick we are trying to play here is, instead of giving two incisions on the side of decompression, I have given one incision between, between, in between the two uh, uh, identifiable marks for the pedicle screw. So th this incision in itself will serve for doing the decompression and putting in the Jamshedi needle for both the cranial and the caudal screw on the right side. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. The BP is very high. One second, can I have the bipolar? Where is the foot switch? Here. Cordial. Suction. So just to orient ourselves, the green uh, is the caudal end, right? Can you just mark the caudal end for us? Point out the caudal and cranial sides. This, this is the caudal end. Okay. And this is the right side. This is the cranial. Yeah. Okay. Can we have a shoot now? This is locked. Okay. Can you do a little bit more of craniocaudal tilt on the CM? Yeah, that's it. Now, can we have a shoot again? Which is the one? Which, which is the left, which is the right? No, no, no. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Now shoot, please. Okay. So Dr. Puneet, you're trying to land on the facet joint. Is no, it? I'm not trying to land on the facet joint. I'm just identifying it. This is a Jamshedi. We are trying, we are, we are going to get in the screws with this. Little challenging in at me these cases. Na? Now, can we have a shoot? Up Dalna Shuru Karo. Shoot again. This is the new one. Yeah. Okay. I need the knife. One second. Okay, now shoot. Shoot, please. So, another thing I would like to mention here is if you see that the CM is craniocaudally oriented to make the superior end plate collinear. And the spinous process is almost in the middle between the two middle borders of pedicles. 
shoot please again shoot shoot so this is manoj this is me right shoot again hmm timer please okay shoot again for the benefit of the Anu. post graduates dr pune oh okay 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 that was good got it. Dr. Puneet. Okay, can we shoot? Meanwhile, the audience can feel free to ask questions. and we can have a parallel discussion shoot again now which one that one okay can i have the hammer please can i see the uh, x ray which is the right and left on the cm hmm. image okay now shoot please yeah perfect so this case the only challenge here is that because of the listesis the the proximal vertebra is a little deeper and the uh, facet is sitting out uh, shoot please shoot shoot hmm. uh, dr puneet yes i am hearing please go yeah go for on. the for the benefit of the post graduates can you offer some tips Shoot. as to how to identify the cranio caudal inclination of the jamshedi needle whether you can use the cr mangulation mm -hmm. to understand those things uh what needs to be learnt is that you when you go in you identify the transverse process with the tip of the jamshedi needle shoot please and once you identify the transverse process you go cranial to that you go caudal to that and come back in the middle and then start sliding it medially till you hit the facet shoot please yeah isko bahar nikal lo no you need this much inclination entry point shoot again Okay, then let's have a lateral view. So I guess once you make the vertebral body is parallel, end plates parallel, and as you're passing the needle, you'll know that you're going parallel to you're the superior end plate. Then you have to stop somewhere. Okay, then we take a lateral view. Stop, stop. We take a lateral view. Better, better. Now, if we look closely at the monitor now, or on the ap view the superior end plate is no focus focus yeah this one hmm. so the superior end plate is uh, you you can see a, a very linear superior end plate there is no oval shadow unlike some of the other ones if you see above and we have entered the jamshedi through the by and large through a 2 o'clock and a, uh, through a Uh, three o'clock and a uh, uh, two o'clock and a nine o'clock kind of a position, which is reasonably acceptable for this kind of lordosis. So we have gone all the way. I've gone two third inside and almost more than half on the uh, two third on the right side and almost half on the left side. Now we are going to check on the lateral view if we are not too far medial or too far lateral. One second. No, it's not. Up there will go. Or, yes, it's okay. Up there, down will go. shoot 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 no transfer you can transfer here 
Okay, so now you can show that. Mary is other deep, eh? Aapki is other deep. Let me hammer, then I will show. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, shoot now. Ah, so I was the one. Okay, so but you you have to. They are seeing the same. How? How? Are ah, okay, okay, okay. So how do I show like this? Then you have to show. You have some artery or something. Yeah. Ah, do bada wala do. Jaldi de do. Thoda time ka issue hoga na. We have recorded category also to go. Can you see that? Now, can you go back to the previous image AP? Hmm. Yeah. So if you see the APB, Dr. Yogesh, are you with us? Yes, sir. Very yeah. much around. So now if you can see the uh, on the uh, monitor, the left hand side, we have the AP image. Uh, and on the right side, I've gone through almost between two and three o'clock type, type of a position. And on the left side, Dr. Manoj has gone through between nine and 10 kind of a position. So on the right, I am reached almost the medial pedicular wall, almost there, more than two thirds. On the left, he is halfway. So we go uh, and check it on the lateral view. And if I, if I check it on the lateral view, uh, now we are, I have actually hammered it a little bit after the AP view. We were right, right beyond the posterior vertebral margin on the lateral view and now we have pushed it inside so the, the the one on the right looks okay one on the left looks according to me a little lateral because it was halfway and it was reach, uh, on the ap but it it has reached the posterior vertebral margin on the lateral view uh, uh, dr puneet yeah uh, on the lateral image can you offer any tips as to how to identify which is the right and the, which is the left the uh, if, if we are doing it simultaneously, we are saving a lot of shots. So on the lateral image, if there is a confusion that the, which Jamshedi is coming from the right and the left, what we, you can do, what we, what you can do is you can clinically match it with the skin surface, which one is deeper one. Second, you can see which one is coming more cranially or which one is coming more caudally. And then you can always tap a couple of millimeters uh, or uh, hammer it, uh, mallet a couple of millimeters to see which one advances ahead. So there are three, four ways you can identify. Now shoot again. Hmm. Hmm. Next step ready to come Hmm. 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 Okay, shoot again. Hmm. lateral hai hai. Jada ho ro, bhi hai. So now the next step that I have done is I have moved in the guide wire through the Jamshedi and there is a crunchy sensation while the guide wire is moving ahead. So that is very important that you are inside the vertebral body. It's a cancellous bone. The guide wire will usually go ahead easily. If it does not, you can use the initial dilator on the guide wire and then you try hammering the guide wire with the little bit which is left behind the initial dilator. Shoot. Yeah. So once you have reasonably engaged the guide wire, some artery, reasonably engage the guide wire deep enough into the vertebral body, you can remove the cannula of the Jamshedi needle. So what's a good, good point at which you introduce the guide wire when you've gone half the depth the, into uh, the vertebra with your Jamshedi? The moment I am a few millimeter deep into the vertebral board, posterior vertebral margin, I am in front of that a few millimeter. I usually engage the guide wire at that particular time. Just to ensure safety and have the crunchy feeling. 
and everything is on the lateral view. I'm not watching the AP view to insert the guide wire. Shoot, please. Yeah. Bahar nikala apne. Huh. Angulate karo. Huh. Ab hammer karo. One second. Just wait, wait, wait. Shoot, please. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, shoot again. Wait, wait, wait. Shoot again. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Hammer, 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 hammer. Wait, 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 wait. Shoot again. Okay, can you go to the lateral? So the one on the left was looking a little more lateral. So we have changed the trajectory. You have any tips in terms of changing the bevel directions when you want to redirect this? Yeah. The uh, tip here is that if you are if you are feeling that my Jamshedi needle is going too far lateral, so then you have to come out all the way from the entry point. You have to change it from there. Otherwise, you won't be able to change it. Shoot, please. Perfect. So now if you can see on the CM, now the now this will be a good uh, good example for the PG students. Look at the forget the guide wire which have already been inserted on the right side. Now the left side, Dr. Manoj side, we have redone it from the entry point. We took the Jamshedi all the way out at the uh, at the entry point, and then we have gone into the pedicle, which is almost 50% on the AP view. And then we, when we go to the lateral view, we are like 80 to 90%. We are still to enter the posterior vertebral uh, wall. So that means this is kind of an ideal trajectory where the lateral image is slightly leading by the AP image. Had this AP, AP image shown the medial the uh, tip at the medial border of the pedicle and the lateral would have been halfway, that means to medial. And if the on the AP view, if on the AP view, we see it going all the way to the medial border and on the lateral, we see it is only halfway, that means to medial. But if in the, on the AP, we see it is only one third into the pedicle and on the lateral, it has already crossed the vertebral margin. That means it is far lateral. So both of these conditions are not acceptable. Right now we have a good entry. So this is the acceptable one. Also, uh, again, for the for the people who are beginning to learn these things, could you also offer insight as to how you identified that the initial screw on the right, I mean, the initial trajectory on the right side was lateral? I mean, left side, Dr. Manoj's side was lateral. What was it that prompted you to redirect it? Uh, because... Yeah, because uh, on Dr. Manoj's side, when we when we had done the AP part, when we moved the CM to the lateral, we saw that Dr. Manoj's side, the Jamshedi needle had on the AP was only halfway in, but on the lateral, it was already five or seven millimeters ahead into the vertebral body. So that was kind of unacceptable because that screw won't have the kind of purchase what we have uh, in a true uh, uh, mid trans particular position. Is okay? We are okay? Yeah, fantastic. Then go there. So we are now we are now have a very satisfactory entry and trajectory. Jamshedi, please. For the upper vertebra, the lower one is again going to be a big challenge. Okay, can you bring in this here? Combine karo. Now the challenge Dr. Yogesh on the lower side is that if we get a entry and a trajectory uh, from the three o'clock or two o'clock, then the, uh, the trajectory would be parallel to the superior end plate, but it might be very close to the upper screw. So that might create us a technical difficulty for decompression and putting in the rod. So we'll try to target the sacrum from the lower half of the pedicle. Okay, can we have a shoot? Are we ready? Yes, we are ready for the shoot, please. Okay, one, the CM needs to come down. Second, you need to tilt more. No, 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 no. Go craniocaudal, please. Yes, come here. Go down, come down. Yes, thank you. Are we ready? Hard hands, hard hands. Yeah, feel the bone. Yeah, shoot, please. 
Yeah, much better, much better, Dr. Yogesh. If you see on the CM now, forget the Jamshedi entry points. Just see the pedicles are now very prominently seen. So we have tilted the CM a little more craniocaudal, or you can do some bit more of reverse Trendelberg with the table. You can play either way. Yeah, we can we can see the CM image. It's nice, Wonderful. it's beautiful, good. So I am the one which is a little inferior, no? So that is my preferred trajectory. You have to bring it inferior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm intentionally a little inferior. You have to go out and out and lateral, okay? No, you have to go out. Better, but inferior. Yeah, like that, yes. Shoot, please. Okay. Can I have the hammer? Thoda up kar up. Hmm. You want me to help? Okay. Oh, can you clean? Clean the screen. Hmm. Shoot, please. Better. Yeah, definitely better. Oh, why are you changing it? No, 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 no. No problem. Hmm. Huh. Shoot, please. Huh. This is okay. This is okay. One second, one second. Hmm. Now, can we hammer? Slow, 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 slow. Yes, better, better, better. Yeah, little more. Oh, slow, 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 slow. Okay. Okay. Can we have a shoot now? Shoot, please. Okay. Can we go to the. No. Just wait, wait, wait. Hammer. No, no. This is going lateral here. Because of the sacralization, there's some resistance. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And mine is. Where is mine? Has to go. Okay, shoot again. Okay, give us the lateral view. No, this is not a good view. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. I know which one is which. Don't worry about that. Okay. Abhi lock karo idhar. Huh. Thoda upar jao. Okay. Okay. Now shoot, please. Hmm. Open. Open. Yeah. Now lock. Now shoot, please. Hmm. Oh, that's okay. That's not a bad one. So on the AP. Hmm. Unfortunately, we are not able to see the lateral image properly. Maybe the audio video guys can do something in terms of brightness contrast. Okay. It should very please. dark. Shoot, please shoot. Can you shoot? Hmm. Okay. Now let's get back to the AP. Get back to the AP. So on Manoj side, we are finding it technically difficult to have an inferior to superior trajectory because of the bone mass of the sacralization. It is a little technically difficult, especially with the listhesis. There is an obstruction there. And uh, also the iliac crest coming in the way. On my side, uh, I have found an inferior to superior trajectory. Can we have an AP view? Uh, shoot, yeah, shoot. But since we are decompressing, this is the AP. This is the new one. So I think you are a little more lateral. You have to take it out. 
So again, the same challenge that we are finding is to medialize because of the iliac crest. So that, that is the little technical difficulty here. If, if you see the AP view and the lateral view, lateral is far ahead. So this, this means this crew is a little more lateral than what we would like to accept. So we just come out at the entry point. Yeah, okay. Yeah, now shoot please, shoot please. Hmm. No problem. Let it slip. Go like this. Uh, now, now, am I? Okay, wait. Shoot, please. Yeah, perfect. Keep going. Okay, wait. Hold, 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 hold. Okay, shoot, please. Okay, and this one is me, huh? Hmm. Okay, shoot again. Can we have a lateral now? Okay, shoot now. Yeah, so Dr. Yogesh, can you bring in? Can you bring in here? Yeah. yeah, we are there. So we have been successful in getting an acceptable position, whatever challenges we are. Dr. Hirani has given us a very technically challenging case that way. He's testing our skills. Now, if yeah, you see. It's just, just to bring out the best from you. <laughs> <laughs> we all hope for the best. Uh, so if you now check it on both the AP and the lateral, you will see this is the best we can get with whatever the, uh, because we are also heading for a tricortical. So we're not that worried about the uh, little lateral trajectory. This is the best we can achieve right now. If you see on the AP view, I am two third in. On the lateral, I'm just, just at the posterior vertebral body margin. So I'll accept that. And uh, uh, for Manoj, there is a little bit more challenge, but we are like halfway here and almost there. So we'll just withdraw a little bit and push it a little more medially, and that should be it. Okay, good. Dr. Punit? Yeah, I'm hearing, yeah. please. Uh, these tips of uh, the Jamshed needle are trocar tips. Do you think if you had a bevel tip, it would no. have been easier Shoot. to work with and change your direction? Shoot. The bevel, as I showed in my presentation, has a definite advantage in. They are like the, the beveled edges are more like the curved Lenke probe. So they allow you to manipulate a lot better than these tips. But as I told you, they want they want us to go through the worst circumstances. Okay. Okay, so that's a very happy situation now. No, I need a cocker, cocker. Yeah, hammer, hammer. No, 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 little up, little up here, yeah. Too far, little down, yeah, thank you. Can I, can I hold this, can I hold this? Can I hold this? No, no, no. Now you go. Now you go. Go, 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 go. go. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Good, good. Okay, you can put both of them there. Okay. Can we have a lateral shoot now? Okay. Hmm. I'm going towards promontory or too much? Okay. 
Now, can I have a shoot again? Wonderful. I think I made a mistake, Dr. Yogesh, by showing all the tricks in the presentation. They want to test it all here. Yes, as I said, they want to bring out the best from you. <laughs> now, another trick I am anticipating is when I'll put the screw, my guide wire is a little more superior. So the, the another trick which I mentioned earlier is when I will tap it, I will tap it till the just beyond the posterior vertical margin, then I will withdraw the guide wire and then I will change the tap direction. So that will then at, towards the end, I will insert the guide wire again so that I get the, uh, the one desired uh, trajectory for the screw. Okay, shoot. Did I make it clear? Yes, yes, you are quite clear. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the AP. So we are, as of now, we are happy with the uh, trajectories that we have got. I have a decent space to work on my side. Are you using any special gloves or eyewear? What's the question? Dr. Pitwa has a question. Dilators, you, please, dilators. Are you using any special gloves or eyewear? No, I just bought it from Janpat Delhi for 50 rupees. But I, your question is very valid that one should, one should. But I think my team doesn't let me scrub these days. So I'm saving on some cost on that. But back home, jokes apart, back home, we have the protective gear for everyone. It's bought by the hospital. Can I have the next dilator, please? So Dr. So Puneet, could you just tell us what you're doing right there? And yeah, what you're trying to feel with the yeah. first. So ideally, ideally you, uh, when you put in your initial dilator, if you see these are sequential dilators, can you see the dilators on the surgical field? Yes, we can, but yeah. can these uh, so remove these are from, yeah, that's sequential better. dilators which are calibrated. So there is a marking, uh, 10 mm, 20 mm, 30, a uh, differential of 10 mm, there are markings. So sequentially they are dilating the area, but since this, this facet is almost subcutaneous, and we understand that in this particular patient with this kind of pathology, I'm, I'm not even looking in the CM right now where I am because the facet is so palpable here. I'm just saving on some shots. Ideally, one can have a look at the initial dilator landing onto the facet. We avoid putting a guide wire because guide wire can migrate and that can be potentially uh, dangerous. So we just start the first step with the initial dilator. No, zoom out, zoom out, please. Zoom out. So that's the first initial dilator that I landed on the facet and then I'm sequentially putting the larger diameter. So you look at the trajectory of your, uh, on the lateral view, do you look at the trajectory of your first uh, dilator that you put in? Would that be, you know, parallel to the disc space, the superior end plate or the inferior end plate? No, we need six or five. Uh, six. Is the air conditioning working? Yeah. The, the attachment. EKS is it? So it makes the electro right. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Puneet. Yes. I'm yeah, I was here. asking you about the trajectory of your uh, dilators, as in, you know, is it uh, 
in what direction is it towards the superior end plate or the inferior end plate of the disc or rather of the vertebra parallel parallel to the superior end plate of the lower vertebra okay that is the desired trajectory i don't want to get close to lateral view this going a little fast it will obstruct my lateral view go a little fast yeah Does it have anything to do with that? Except it. We'll see. Is there another attachment here? Okay, one second. How will we lock this? There has to be a bolt here. Okay, okay, just wait. Okay, okay, just wait. Uh, one second, one second. Okay, that's okay. So, for the time being, okay. Okay, okay. I got it. No. This is no, 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 no. It's okay. Okay, can we check it on AP and lateral? Can we? Yes. Can we check there? Dr. Puneet, yes. there is a question from the audience. They want to know the maximum size of the dilator that you used. Till what point did you dilate? The, okay, can we go to the lateral? Uh, what we did, what we did is there are serial dilators. Can you show me this dilator? So the uh, the last dilator is usually 2 to 3 mm lower than the tube that you use but it is mentioned accordingly so if we, we are using a 22 into 6 that means 22 mm diameter into 60 mm length we are using that so the last dilator mentions that it is for the 22 mm tube and understandably it is 2 mm lower in diameter than the 22 mm tube You can use the maximum diameters available in solid at 22 that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. But uh, if you want to use higher, it is better to use those expandable retractors, which are like a hemi cylinder on either side. So you can put them in, you can uh, uh, distract it. There, there is a lever to distract it. So you can take it, uh, you know, as long as you want. So what we were discussing is also if you want to avoid the cost of the percutaneous screws, you can use those expandable retractors, do the decompression through that, then expand them and put in the screw like a mini open. Okay. I think we're okay here. Yeah. Okay. So we might require some tube adjustment later, but as of now, considering the anatomy, we are not very unhappy. If we look at the CM on the AP view, our trajectory uh, uh, looks uh, very much in line with the 
uh, the uh, in line with the facet uh, what we can do is also we are trying to save some shots here we can do an oblique view on top looking through the tube on the ap and looking onto the facet but uh, we are very happy knowing that the medial border of the facet is well covered within the tube on the lateral view we are decently placed in the lower half of the disc space almost parallel maybe a little bit adjustment required craniocaudally to the upper end plate okay Did you bring in Did I Can you come closer? Make sure it doesn't get switched off, it will waste time. Go back, go back, go back. No, no, unlock it and go back. More, 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 yes. I think it is okay. Just can you move this? Push this. Push, push inside. Push, push, push. Yeah, thank you. Now bring it closer. Is okay. Okay, can we tilt the table to the other side? Can I have a dry voice? Little more. Can you have to remove my specs now? Okay. Can we wait? 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 Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You can switch off the lights now. Okay. Can we move to the uh, camera inside the scope now? Yeah, we, we can see it. We can see the what you are able to see in the microscope. Wonderful. If you can just orient us the cranial, caudal, medial, lateral, please. I will do that. Okay. Can you show me the pottery? So. This is the medial part. If we can label it on the screen in the auditorium, this is the medial. 
Yeah. This is the lateral right where this, uh, you see the attachment. Uh, I'll show you a little bit here. One second. This attachment is the lateral. Okay. And this is the medial. And this is cranial. And this is caudal. Wonderful. So I'm um, right at the lamina and the facet interface. If you can see that, can you add, can you see that lamina facet interface? Yes, yes, we can. This is the cranial side of the lamina. That's the cranial side of the lamina. And I'm on the facet capsule now. Very soon we will see the joint line here. So that is the uh, superior articular process, the superior one from the lower vertebra. Can we see that clearly? And can we also identify easily the joint line now? That's the joint line. Can we see the mobility of the facet here? Can we see the facet moving because of the lysis? The inferior articular is moving. Is it clear? No. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. You want to see? Okay. Just one, one second. One. Let's let's settle it before we move ahead. I'm worried about your cadaveric time. Otherwise. We can extend now. Uh, yeah, now you want to move this? Hmm. Yeah, that's it? Okay. So clear, clear. I think we have lost the transmission in the auditorium. No, we are very much around. Would you, would you ever be concerned about your cautery tip touching the this particular tube when you are doing this particular step? It's better to avoid, but it actually doesn't make that great a difference. How much is the cotton on? That's the upper border of the superior articular. I'll just tilt the microscope so that I can center it. Can you see the tip of the SAP? Yes, we can. Wonderful. That's the tip of the SAP, right there. That's why if you see now I can I can move my tube a little bit distally if I want to. So there's no point fidgeting the tube before you go in. If you are reasonably there, otherwise you'll keep shooting. Now uh, we can avoid the uh, radiation and can tilt the tube under vision. So that's a, another tip to reduce the, don't try to be perfect in your tube landing uh, with the help of your image intensifier. If you can see that the medial border of the facet is very well covered in the tube, you are good to go. Okay. So, can I have the osteotome now? Okay. You give me the drill, give me the osteotome. Sorry, can, okay. can, can you centralize your microscope because it's a little bit off the center? Okay. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Okay. Hello, guys. Let's take some time. Let's have the drill. Huh? Our waiting period is too long.
So just to observe that the joint is very arthritic and it's very hypertrophied here. Um, the audio video guys, can you do something about the color combination? Because it's all very dark here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. How do you how do you increase the microscope light? Because in Vario, I don't have the control. Can you increase the light? Maximum, huh? mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, no. Vario is like this only. Pantara is different in light. No? We'll see what we can do. At least we can clean the tube walls. Can you give me a clean gauze? Sterile clean gauze. Yeah. And then can you give me an artery or something? Let's let's see what we can do the maximum to improve the quality what they are visualizing because there is a limitation in the microscope and the relay. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, we'll try our best to keep you navigating in between. Maybe the top light can be switched off or something or... Uh, can we switch the planner lights? All the planner lights, let them go. See if it is getting slightly better, slightly better. We bit. Can I remove this? Can I remove this? No, 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 this wire. Sorry. No, 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 I won't just... Yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry. So sorry. Uh -oh. How does this work? No, that I will do, but how does this work? No. No. No, it is not rotated. Okay, give me the ostracum, man. We'll explain it. Um, one second, give me the suction. Hmm. One second, no, no, you hold it, you hold it. Okay, hammer now. Okay, hammer it now. Hmm. Hmm. There is some drill malfunction. So till the time it okay, wait, 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 wait. Because of so much of sclerosis, it is better to thin out before you use the ostetone. But I understand. Short the short the. Can you see those two cuts, Dr. Dr. Yogesh, Dr. Maskaranes? 
Yeah, yeah. We we, yeah, we all can see. The, I'm showing you those two cuts because we are trying to work uh, around the drill. We understand that there's a malfunction. So we have we have made one cut. Can you show me the osteotome? No, no, but they need to be aware of the cuts also, na? Because then we need autograph. So we have made one proximal cut here and one here. And now we have released the inferior facet, but it has come out partially because it's a very sclerotic bone. So what's the size of the osteotome that you're using there? Uh, it's, a, it's a 15 mm, right? It's a 15 mm. Right. Any tips for the mm -hmm. beginners on the safe use of osteotomes in these situations? Mm -hmm. uh, can you come again, please? Any tips for the beginners on the safe use of osteotomes in these situations? Yeah, absolutely. So you identify your uh, laminofacetal junction proximally and you don't go proximal to that so that you can, you remove only the inferior facet and don't get into the canal, very important. If you see now very typically, just follow the laminofacetal junction, very, very important. Don't cut into the lam lamina, yeah. So the rest of the inferior facet also we have, no, I need the osteotome, I need the osteotome. Yeah, the other challenge is this is lytic as Dr. Manoj said. So it's like a mouse. You have to catch it. So, and that's why I said that for beginners, you attempt something which is completely reducible or a degenerative list, grade one. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, give me the kerosene. Like also, a prior usage of bar can actually make your life slightly easier because you will bar the sclerotic facet and then it will be so much easier getting in. Can I have the osteotome again? Watch it. Can I have a dissector? So the, this is also another step, very important, what I'm trying to elicit here. Can I have something? Yeah, yeah, okay. So this is the superior articular, right? So I'm going on the outer aspect and I'm feeling, and this is the ela the superior border. So you know where to cut, right? You don't want to cut into the pedicle. Is it clear? Yes. See the identification here. Now I am at, at the bony superior landmark. This is the superior bony landmark outside. So that means I'm not going below this. This is a very important step because if you cut below this, then you are going to go. Once you have an osteo osteotome cut into the pedicle, it is kind of difficult to salvage that pedicle. Okay, can I have the hammer now? Okay, can you hold the suction? Hmm. Okay. So a little bit of trick if you have observed I'm playing uh, with the microscope and the trick is that our osteotome is not bayonet shaped. Give me the dissector now. Give me this. 
Oh, so that is the superior border. Left to secret. Huh? What is it? We got the pedicle. I think this is the superior, which is hypertrophied also. Na? The entry is below. Is the drill working now? Fantastic. Can you give me the drill? Oh, this is, is it going to go that deep? This is the bit, the new one. So you are trying to extend the opening cord cranially, is it? Yeah. I'm trying to thin it out to remove it because it is kind of locked there. Actually, there is a lot of overlapping here. Take a second. I need the bar again. Yeah. Bar, please. Okay, can I have some irrigation? Suction block, right? I, I think this kind of a case is not advisable through the loop. Uh, have you been able to remove the superior facet of S1? Not yet, not yet. It's quite deep. Okay. Uh, we're a little bit foxed. What exactly are you drilling? We are drilling uh, through the joint line, both the part of the leftover inferior and the leftover superior. Can we wash? Can we clean the suction? Suction block, suction block. Suction block, please. We need a longer suction. This is very small. See how far above it has gone. Give me the pottery, please.
Oops. Can you give me the uh, the letter again? Yeah. Oops. You okay? Suction. Yeah. No, we need uh, we need the bar. So you can see the pedicle here, and this is the superior articular. Now, is it very clear? I will show you. The big osteophyte we have removed. Okay. So are we there? So this is the pedicle zone. And this is the superior articular. This is the tip of that. This is the joint line. Very clear? So the superior articular facet is still not removed, is it? No, the because it is very deep. Okay. It's very thick. Uh, can you have the discourses? Can we change the suction? Can you take this first? Yeah, give me that. Block. Okay, we're ready to go. Suction not working. Check it at the rear end. We are waiting for suction. So another tip here is that uh, all those high speed bar from Midas, now we have for the MIS, we have the bayonet handle. So here I'm working with the straight handle. So what I'm doing is playing a little bit of trick, but I have my limitations. How much can I move the microscope to one, one side? I can't have a coaxial view if I'm working with a straight kind of, kind of a bar. More than that, it is hitting back. It's hitting back. Okay. Yeah, give me the osteotome again. Give me the osteotome again. And a dissector. Yeah, thank you. Okay, the osteotome now. Osteotome. Okay. Hammer, please. Can you hold the suction?
Can you see the superior articular getting separated? Yes, we can. Okay, can I have the uh, artery or the, this won't work, we will need some proper kind of a thing. Okay, so there it comes, huh? I'm showing you. Okay, can you see that? Yes, we can. I put it back just to visualize and I have brought it out. This is the tip, this is the medial side and this is where I've cut it from the base of the pedicle. Okay. There it goes. Okay, now give me a number three or a four keratin. Thank you. Okay, keep all the bone, please. So in a thin patient like this, if you can see, I was like three centimeter away from the midline and I'm still just on the facet. Open it. Open it. Open it. Thank you. Okay, now, thank you. Easy, easy, easy. No force, please. Thank you. Okay, loosen, please. Okay, now, tighten. Slow, slow, please. Yeah. Okay, done, done. It's done, it's done. Okay, I need the, can you take this number four kerosene, please? Thank you, you can pick up the drill from here, not required anymore. Okay, I need the number three, number three, please. This is jammed, no, it's jammed. Okay, can you take the bone? Okay. Take the bone quickly. You can see the ligamentum flavum, right? That's the flavum, no? I'm so sorry. I think the transmission is not to the extent that you can differentiate the yellow color here. Yeah, we can still make out. I mean, Fantastic. it could be brighter, but we can still make out. That's where orientation is so important in spine, whatever you do. Can you clean the suction, please? Tip, tip is blocked. Keep the bipolar ready. I'm in the exiting area. Can you do something about the suction is blocked again? Okay, thank you. Suction, please. No. Okay. So two things I'm trying to do here, one go flush uh, with the pedicle below 
and catching on the uh, lower lamina a bit. Can you? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Can you? Can you focus the microscope because you know half of okay. things that you're doing are not visible. Okay. Give me a moment. Can you help, please? Thank you. Okay. Now, is this better? Yeah. Yeah. Much better. Thank can you. We, can Thank you see you. the fat dissector, please? Okay. Yes. I'll talk to you only. Yeah. Thank you. So you see the fat here? Yes, yes, so we can. That's where we are entering the traversing area, right? That's the traversing nerve root. I just pulled it out to show you. Can you, can you see that? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's the right. traversing nerve root. I've just pulled it to show you. Right there itself. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll move a little proximal because these lytic ones are a little notorious. You need to pull out a little more bone which is the floating one uh, to get the proximal attachment of the ligamentum flavum. Garrison is ready, number three, four. Keep the osteotome ready, please. No moving, no touching the microscope, please. The microscope. Number three, four. Thank you. Can you keep the bone? Can you keep the bone? Okay, the attachment of the flavum proximal. Can you can you appreciate that? Uh, um, yes. Here it is, right? Yes. Here it is. The fat coming below from there. Yes. Yes. We can see Wonderful. that. Uh, does the house have any questions, the PG students, if they have anything in their mind or anybody from the auditorium has any questions, please do ask me. They are all awestruck. They're just watching in awe. No questions. Here you go. Here you go again. Can I get the dissector back? Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm pulling on the flavum now, okay? I need a number three carison here. Can you take this? Any tips that you would want to offer at this stage to prevent any dural tears when you are trying to do this step? You have to put a petty out in there. The other thing I do is, uh, give me the dissector again, which I've already done, is that I see if there are any adhesions anywhere. So I've already done that part. I've gone and checked completely. And also with the listesis and the lytic slip, the dura is far away actually. Oh. 
Any, do you have a better person than this? Any number will do, just a better person which can buy it. I need a bitch who can buy it. There you go. The moment of ecstasy. So most of the times we use a 45 degrees angled forward uh, kerosene punches. Are there any instances where you use anything else other than 45 degrees angled? Say 90 uh, degrees or backward angled. Sunil, can you help me with the question? Because there's a lot of noise in the theater. So, can, can, huh. hmm. I'm not a big fan of 90 degree, but I usually do shift the gears from uh, two to five. I'm actually very fond of number five in the lumbar area. If you, if for some reason your bar is not that excellent, then number five will give you a good bone. See the, see the gap with the lysis and the L5 moving ahead. See the distance that you have between the dura and the lower lamina. See, see there is a, you know, an entire elephant can go through. See this and then see the dura. Uh, but I do have uh, I do have kerosene to bite on the medial border of the facet in case I'm doing something uninstrumented. Those kerosenes have larger uh, depth of the cutting edge. So they are very helpful if you have to reduce the uh, damage and use them uh, for cutting on the medial aspect. Especially when you are running multiple theaters and you are our systems are stuck at in another one or two theaters. Pardon? Okay. So I will correct it. Okay. Can I have the dissector and the 90 degree? Hmm. Is it better the view now? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was trying to show earlier, right? The nerve root. So that's the thecal sac, that's the nerve root. I am staying outside everything. Is it very clear now? Yes. Yeah. Can you give me a nerve hook now here? Nerve hook, please. I usually don't like to remove the fat at all. I just like to keep it the way it is. Even the vessels, I touch as less as less as possible. Try to save them. Medicine, please. So this area is a little fraught with the, no, I need the bipolar. Yeah, very well. One second. I'll have to adjust the tube a little bit now because the direction is like this. Okay. Now, can we fix it here? Is my detector the problem? Hmm, suction, please. No, 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 no. no. It's just that the uh, table attachment is a little wobbly, but we are doing good here. Can everybody see the disc here? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we can. 
Now I need I need the hook again. Yeah, hook please. Okay. Any questions before we go ahead and do the discectomy? Another trick here is that do some lateral dissection. If you don't want to struggle putting in the higher size scale, do some lateral dissection. Otherwise, your dura will keep jumping in the way. We have done a good lateral dissection here. Back color again. So I'm working with instruments which I advise not to. Can you see the bipolar? There is no bayonet. Okay, 90 degrees. I need the inner knife now. 90 degree and inner knife. Okay, you can leave the other one. No, leave the other one. Ekbar vapis lagao, nikalo. Distal lejo, distal lejo nikal ke. Ha, ab lagao. Distal, no no, angle. Cranial portal angle lagao. Ha, ab half ko cranial lejo, half ko cranial. Yes, yes, yes. Go 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 go. Go go perfect. Uh, I wanted to take you to take the vessels also. So now, one second, one second. Okay, now, now come in. No, come one second, one second, one second. Yeah, perfect. That is it. Okay, can I have the keratin number three, four? Whatever, whatever bite. Take this. So, considering that putting a cage here is not going to be easy because of the craniocaudal inclination, you go as flush, you know, as flush with the pedicle as possible. Else, in this particular case, it will make it technically difficult. Give me the dissector, the one before, the one we brought in here. Yeah. And can you give me the inner knife? You have to put a small one. The one with the broader face, yeah. Okay, give me the knife now. Okay. Rafa? Okay. So we are going ahead with the discectomy. Is that clear now? The vision is clear? Yes, we can see you doing an annulotomy now. Yeah. So now see how far superior is the disc. Or this uh, it will break, man. This, this is very wobbly. See how far superior it is, the disc. As I was mentioning you earlier, So, a little bit of osteotomy of the sacrum might be required. Give me the disc forceps. You have a different kind of disc forceps. Give me the uh, give me the carison first. Carison. Hmm. ये छोटा डिसेक्टर लगा दो इसको निकाल के हम्म डू यू हैव अ नंबर 2 नंबर 3 ब्रॉड डिसेक्टर इज दिस नंबर 2 नंबर 3 यस कैन यू रिमूव दैट हां छोड़ दो छोड़ दो हां दिस इज इट कैन आई हैव द कैरिसन
Take this one. Okay. Are you ready with the shaver? Hmm. Hmm. Shiva, please. Uh, reverse circuit on. Hmm. Okay. 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 Hmm. okay, this for tips. Okay. Can I have the carousel now? No, I need the number two. Can you do a little bit more reverse plenal work? The lifting the table a little bit. Are we doing it? Yeah, let it go, let it go. Okay, thank you. Can you lift the table up? Okay, thanks, that's it. Okay, now, can I see the kerosene again, number two? Okay, this one is actually this one. the half shift, perfect, yeah. That's what I want. For two minutes. Going through the PLL. The garrisons are recoiling like a rifle. Huh? I'm missing the shooting. Oh, wow. Never mind. There, there. Stretch token, okay. Okay, give me the shaver now. Oh. So, a little bit of end plate, I am the sclerotic part. Most optimizing just to make the entry. If you look at the x ray carefully, there's a lot of space ahead of this edge of the sacrum. If you look at the x ray, hmm. Hmm. okay. So, anybody wants to have a look at the CM at this point? Garrison number two. No, we're quite happy. Yeah, we will have a CM shoot very soon. So I've gone all the way to the LLL. LL. But since there is a differential, you feel the apparent space is very big, anteroposteriorly. Abhi, ye wala haath nikalo, right wala. Nikal do, ya pada rahe do, koi baat nahi. Haan, nikal do.
So I'm going all the way to the outer border so that the insertion of cage does not push my cage to the other side. So we are all set. Can I have the initial shaver? Uh, size eight or seven? I need the seven first. Yeah. Thank you. CM. Can we have a shoot, please? Yeah. Okay. Can you give me a patty? Rakhna isko, rakhe re. Pada re hindu, pada re hindu. Pada re hindu. Give me a patty. Give me another one. Give me another one. Pull karne, pull. Pull karne. Oh man, the forceps is gigantic. Am I just gonna make it? Okay. Anyway, so we are in there. We can leave it here. Let's have a CM shoot. Let's also get the table a little neutral now. We don't want this kind of a uh, bend on the other side. Yeah. Not the trend, but only the lateral tilt. Lateral tilt, you can bring it back. Okay, perfect. That's it. Hmm. Hmm. Can you bring in the CM? No, 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 no. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, by mistake. Uh, uh, this is okay. Good. Thanks. Yeah. So we can lift up the table because we need a lateral view. The entire table to be lifted up. Yeah. Our AP me other. Hmm. Now you have to yes, go to the other side. Okay. Come, come, come. What time is it now? One o'clock. One o'clock. What time now? One thirty. Okay. We'll have to hurry up half an hour. Close it. Okay. Go up. Cranial. Cranial. Go cranial, please. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry. We don't have to go that far. Go cranial. Pull towards you a little bit. Okay, tilt it like that. More, that's it. Come down, come down towards me. That's it. Let's have a shoot, okay? No, 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 don't move, yeah. Yeah, let's see, let's see. Shoot, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, now get me the lateral view. Get me the lateral view. Be careful. You can come towards my side first. No, no, come towards me. Or go up. Go up. Go up. Up, 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 up. Now do a lap. Huh? Height. Increase the height. Increase the height. Okay, go, go, go. Yep. No, bring it this side, sideways, sideways, this one. Yeah, now okay. Now come to my side. Okay, let's see. Um, this may sound like a very ignorant no. question, but I no. just want to know uh, the 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 the. The middle part of the C arm hmm. is not draped. So how what? Shoot. Hello, Dr. Puni. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing. Yeah, how worried are you about sterility when the C arm is moving from the AP to the lateral 
uh, we're trying uh, we're trying no touch we're we're staying away from the table when we are turning it around but it's ideally advisable if you can if you have a cover you can have the entire uh, uh, sleeve and the entire sleeve be covered okay can we have a shoot with where we reduce the kv yeah we, we still need to reduce the exposure Hmm. No problem. We'll send the picture at least VC first. Yeah. So uh, talking about the shaver, uh, I think we are parallel to the uh, the lower end plate. Since the space is very uh, uh, trapezoid, you can see AP to the hung AP. Yeah, we can't see the same pictures. You can't see. Uh, can you see the lateral one? Zoom karoge, is me zoom karo zoom. Zoom We can't we can't see anything. Can you take a picture and send it on WhatsApp? Take a picture on the camera. We we can see something now, yes. Yeah, we can see. Can you zoom in? Zoom in. No, no, not this AP. This AP, this one. So if you see, Dr. Yogesh, see the AP view. If you see the entry looks okay through the tube, but the the anterior half of the shaver looks loose. That's because of the trapezoid space on the AP. Is it visible? Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. I agree to you, you agree with that because that that co-matches with the uh, the one on the lateral that there is a lot of uh, space which is uh, uh, visible between the shaver and the inferior end plate of the upper vertebra. But as I said earlier, our aim is to be parallel to the superior end plate of the lower vertebra. So that way we are doing pretty good here. So at this stage, would you ever consider uh, putting in the screws on the contralateral side and trying to distract the segment? No, this is a lytic one, Dr. Pitwa. This is a lytic. I can put in a 14 size cage also here. I can put in a shaver here from here. It is just opening up like anything. Would you feel that there would be any advantage in putting the screw on the opposite side, reducing the listesses and then putting in your cage? Yeah, that is something that can be done. If we, if we uh, put in the rod, uh, screws and the rod on the other side and try to reduce it now, then it will be helpful in re uh, reducing the listesis further. Like I, I thought that you are asking for distraction. Serves so both the purpose. Light, please. Scope. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I just said that it could serve both the purposes. Pardon? Yeah. Okay. 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 Can I have the uh, that is back like this? Mm -hmm. Be careful, be careful. Nikal, uh, give me the dural dissector. Mm -hmm. No problem, we'll get them into the process very soon. Okay, here. What do? If we can bring it to grade one, we might accept that because one, the patient symptoms are very unilateral. Second, somehow the bone strength is not that great.
this being light eclysthesis would you ever in these kind of situations want to do any kind of direct decompression of the exiting route i mean on the ipsilateral side uh, if it is completely irreducible not moving yes but if i am able to achieve good distal height and i am able to reduce it significantly then no this for sir we are putting what eight yeah and i see slightly larger can i have another dissector another dissector please ye chhota wala dekho So that is the exiting area for us. Next thirty zero one. So that's that's the exiting area of the lytic slip where we see this ooze half half of it here. Okay. So here. Okay. Hold this. Ah, put it on your side. Ah. Okay. Uh, not required. What size shaver did we use last? Uh, we'll have the one bigger one. Nine. Hmm. Hmm. Last. Yes, yeah, nine shaver. actually in such cases it's not a uh, bad idea to do a bilateral facetectomy and uh, what what would be the gains out of that yeah sort of because somewhere the somewhere it may act as a tether reducing it carrying it Thank you. 
है ये इसका एंकुलेट है उधर का साइज नाइन अगेन नाइन ले लेते नाइन इज ओके टेक नाइन नाइन इज गुड व्हाट डू यू पीक यू है पीक शो मी द टेन यू ब्रिंग इन द सी एम अगेन जस्ट टू चेक Uh, can we tilt the table towards my side more? More? Okay, that should be okay. Can you please move across, na? Now give me the ten. Ten size shaver. हम्म थोड़ा डिस्टल आ जाए निकाल के थोड़ा सा डिस्टल आ जाए और डिस्टल दिस इज टेन राइट देखना जरा आपको ना मैं थोड़ा अभी तो हेलो वन सेकेंड कैन बी गेट ए पैटी हेयर पकड़ो दिस दिस हम्म लॉक इज मिसिंग है ठीक है ओके 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 लिटिल टेल्ट ऑफ द टेबल टू दैट साइड प्लीज लिटिल टेल्ट लेवल दिस लिटिल मोर दैट्स इट या परफेक्ट थैंक यू एक मिनट गिव मी अनदर पैटी बिगर वन बिगेटिंग ऑफ फ्रॉम थोड़ा सा हाथ चलो गिव मी द डिसेक्टर
Show me the shaver now. Number 10. Okay. Perfect. So 10 ka cage le lo. And if I will get it. About 90 le lo. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And we're holding this here. Is it visible now? Not visible. Not there. How come? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Now, now. Is hmm? it flimsy? So, what is the difference? Can I take this here? Are we ready with the bone graft? We need the bone graft first. Hmm. This is the left hand. is the is the जाने दो अंदर छोड़ दो छोड़ दो ओके नाउ ओके हम मच ग्राफ्ट वाज देयर विद द हाइपरट्रॉफिक दिस थिंग यू गिव मी सम ग्राफ्ट फॉर एंटीरियर ना पैकिंग हम केज इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट मोर इंपॉर्टेंट इज द पैकेट एंटीरियर ठीक है is the screen better now sorry can you just tell us what are you trying to nibble away are you trying to take out the overhang of the superior end plate yeah yeah, we okay. have uh, removed partially so that we have an ease in the insertion of the higher sized cage. And also making it parallel to the end plate uh, so that our cage can uh, be collinear with the superior end plate of the lower vertebra. Are we ready with the graph? Mm -hmm. So, what's the final size of the shaver you used there? Uh, we used the 10 size shaver. Okay. Oh, no. yeah, any bayonet instrument? Actually, my vision goes away now. Once I put any instrument inside. Hmm. More of craft. Okay.
हम्म थोड़ा सा ना उधर आओ मीडियम ही आओ फैटी आएगी ना ये वाले से हाँ थोड़ा सा मीडियम हाँ बस बस परफेक्ट तो ट्रैक कर पा रहे हो एनलेस के ऊपर हो ना बस ठीक है परफेक्ट है ओके दैट लुक्स गुड ओके कैन वी हैव ए नंबर टेन साइज केज ना हो अब इसको मत करो मनोज हाँ टेबल डाउन करो थोड़ा हम्म Hmm. Can we make the table down? Hmm. Okay, let it go down, 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 down. Okay. अभी देखो. Better है? Yeah, that's better. Thanks. Okay, we are ready for the cage. You don't have a teak cage. and you don't have a bayonet handle can you hold this can you hold this can you hold this no no just like this do nothing just hold do nothing okay Can we? No, no, no. Let me check the patty first. Huh? Okay. See, I'm now. See, I'm later. ठीक है. छोड़ दो. हम्म. एक patty और दे दो बच्चे. So we have inserted a ten by twenty-five cage here. So do you have any specific preferences of using a bullet cage versus banana cage in these kind of situations or it's always a bullet cage Sometimes we use the banana but uh my preference is bullet obviously that you have to take it across in an oblique fashion Are you Getting the AP first. AP. AP. Get me the AP first. Yeah. Take a lateral. uh can we see the siam image because we are not able to see it we are just i think yeah. on the can microscope we, can we focus on the uh, ap hmm. the screw would be what size 45 can you uh, give us the gauge for measuring the screw length ठीक है, लिटिल टेबल आप यहाँ, ओके, बस बस बस, हाँ, ठीक है ये, ओके, लेट्स हैव ए लैटरल व्यू नाउ, ओके, व्हाट साइज इज़ दैट? ट्वेंटी फाइव इनटू टेन, ओके, आर वी ओके और वी लिटिल फार अहेड, वी ओके I think we're okay. We're okay here. Uh, you're happy with the size of the cage. You 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 don't feel that it's undersized. Um, actually, there is this view is not the perfect view, and unless you use an expandable or a lordotic cage, you will. Never be able to match the inferior end plate here. Only the superior end plate of the lower vertebra we can match. Whatever uh -huh. uh, size raise that we do, uh, can we can we get in the microscope quickly? Out. Ek shoot do yahan pe shoot do. Shoot do. So in these situations like this, would you feel that probably a banana cage might score over? Again, uh, if it is uh, if it has the lordotic potential, or if you can uh, push it uh, a lot anterior, 
but it won't be easy to insert with the the disk clearance that is required on the other side we also felt partially there was some ossification uh, and that's why if you see i was trying to clear the i was trying to clear the uh, the pll and trying to go across because i was finding some ossification here i wasn't very happy with it it's not a run of the mill case i understand especially for an mis but i think with the cage we are seated well now that uh, we are going to insert the screws we'll get a better positioning uh, of reduction we'll get a better reduction there this forceps can i have this forceps I, I also need a wash this forceps please i also need a wash that is pretty give me a wash count your patties please count your patties ek bar remove karo beta remove kar do manoj theek hai give me the dissector please the broad broad one yeah thank you so your patty count is okay so if you see here the cage is not moving at all you see the cage is not moving at all it is very snugly fit against the end plate there is no movement at all can you see that yes we can i'm trying to rock it as much as i can wash please wash if it's so snugly fitting could it be that the lateral view is not a true lateral or there's a little obliquity of the l4 can i get a patty or l5 rather one add on thing i may mention here is what is helpful is okay na what is helpful is a pre operative ct this for sir please i think we have been discussed about that but the value of a pre operative ct beta aapka haath aa raha hai mano to assess now dr puneet what did you want to assess pre operative ct like any ossification in the disc if it is there okay wash again Wash, please. Can I get the other dissector? No, 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 no. Can I get the other dissector? The narrow one? No, no. Then this is the hook. Thank you. I want to check no bone fragment beneath the traversing. I think we are good to go. Okay, sir. Out, 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 out. Okay, tube out. open easy 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 slowly slowly tube out slowly give me a gauze you know give me a gauze please from this can we tilt the table back okay sorry and let's get the cm in the lateral position please give me another gauze please tilt it towards me yeah little bit more little more okay thank you okay can we get the scope out see i'm in the lateral position please so uh, dr pitwa i was talking about removing the facet on the other side can can i have the uh, mop uh, am i audible I think the mic is gone. Yes, you are. Why? Okay. Yeah, Doctor Pitwa has gone for lunch. 
Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So I was talking about removing the facet on the other side. Is that see? That's the difference between a minimal invasive and a uh, and an open procedure here. We had a big osteophyte on this side, right, where we operated. Okay. So CT scan helps in identifying that. It helps in identifying any ossified disc, any bony stenosis in the foramen. So it certainly helps preoperative CT. So that's something that we all need to learn that preoperative CTs are becoming mandatory in all spine units. Second, I was talking about removing the facet on the opposite side. So what happens is when you when you're doing an open surgery, you use a nibbler and you identify your landmarks very well. In MIS, you're depending upon the C arm to show you the landmarks. So if we have to put in the screw on the other side and try a reduction, you have to first remove the ostophyte. Otherwise, the screw won't go that deep. And the pulling ability will not be there unless you remove the osteophyte first. That osteophyte will always keep preventing you from doing what you want to do on the opposite side. You're talking about uh, the pseudarthrosis in a lytic or the osteophyte? The osteophyte, the massive in osteophyte. Degenerative. In oh. MIS, we have no technique to remove that osteophyte. Okay. So our landmarks, when we are trying to enter uh, uh, with a Jamshedi, we are limited by the presence of that osteophyte. In open technique, we are not. We'll just, you know, uh, uh, nibble it out and then we get the entry that deep where we want it. Sure. But I mean, using the normal technique where we, you know, feel the transverse process and then go uh, sort of walk right up to the lateral aspect of the superior facet, uh, would the, uh, what's that, osteophyte over there actually matter? In a degenerative list, this is no, but in this particular case, you can understand where the, uh, uh, the, with the listhesis being persistent, you, you can see what we are dealing with. The ala is just not visible. And every time you, you're just landing outside. Sure. So these are uh, challenges uh, peculiar to this case. In a degenerative listhesis, it won't matter much. And especially we are, uh, if we are dealing with, uh, this is a sacralization with a bad lytic slip, like a nutcracker. So this is the tough types. If you have a degenerative list, this is at L45, we don't bother about the osteophyte. We have enough space. Sure. Hmm. Go, 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 go. Okay, stop, stop. Huh. Give me the screw, what length. Okay, now if the PG students are around, they need to understand that they have a gauge. You have a gauge? Okay, usually there is a gauge. Uh, uh, Dr. Mascarenas? Uh, he's not here as well. Oops, okay. Uh, may I know who I'm talking to? Yeah, Dr. Kamat. Okay, Dr. Kamat, the, uh, uh, usually we have a gauge now that the guide wires are inside. Yes, go ahead. So we, can. so we can put in the gauge on top and hit the outer border of the pedicle where the guide wire is going in and it will give you the measurement. What is the amount of uh, uh, guide wire that is deep inside the, the pedicle and the vertebral body? And then you can match it with the C arm and decide if you want a five millimeter larger screw than that or your guide wire is deep enough, you want the same length. Sure. Yeah. 45, do you have to Okay. So, what do you have to do? Finally. Hello, forty five again. Take it. Forty five, okay. So, do we have two two rod inserters simultaneous or only one? Hmm? Okay. Now, shoot, please. क्या देखा मैंने नो द बोन्स आर नॉट दैट स्ट्रॉंग हाँ अनलेस कैन आई मूव तू माय साइड या हियर वी आर गोइंग टुवर्ड्स द प्रोमोंट्री सो नो नीड टू चेंज द ट्रेजेक्टरी So now that we have in, we we'll remove this. Hmm. The 
देखा और जाएगा ना अभी एन वी माइट नीड इट एप इन दैट केस वी माइट नीड इट एप इज इट गोइंग अब देखो दिखाओ हाय डॉक्टर पुनीत या या फॉर टू मिनट्स वी जस्ट स्टॉपिंग द ट्रांसमिशन जस्ट टू मेक सम अनाउंसमेंट्स हियर ओके एंड वी विल गेट बैक ओके ओके नोइस सो कैन आई हैव द अदर स्क्रू How was this size? Okay. Good for us. And we have made batches for six. The six batches, three are four each. Okay. So each batch will have about forty-five minutes to spend on the cadaver. So the batches and who are they using will be announced now. Or you can also go to the reception counter. Please, आगे तो नहीं है. Correct करना. Jump तो नहीं करेगा. Batch will have one instructor. Exactly what I wanted. Which is just marginal difference. Might be so. So I am not wearing this specs now. Huh? 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 So Panit, can you hear us? Yeah, very much. What are the things you you, you are concerned about when you are inserting your scripts? What are the things you look out for? Uh, if we are uh, going over the guide wire, if we are, if we don't have to change the trajectory, then all we are worried about is the radiation. So once you enter in, uh, on top of it, you just when uh, the screw on top of the guide wire, you just check it once that. you are not going in a different trajectory than the guide wire because then we will start bending it so you craniocaudally you have to be in line with that and mediolaterally you can't see because there is no axial view on a 2d cm so you see the direction of the guide wire initially that if it is from the midline 20 degree so you keep your hand 20 degree medially while craniocaudal you check it on the lateral view yes good please and are you concerned the possibility of uh, guide wire migration uh, for that particular thing if you are entering on top of the guide wire so once you enter the vertebral body uh, you you can measure your turns like we showed in the presentation if you you see if six turns gives you 1 cm so you can make six turns and take a shoot if you have entered the vertebral body and gone couple of millimeter beyond you just take out your guide wire at that particular time Okay. you don't have to wait all the way for your screw to thread in sure okay hmm dekho hmm theek hai aap ki side karo uh the thing is with this kind of a slip you can't keep it too far behind also smaller size yeah, you can do that or like he said you can go for a kidney shaped cage and place it more anteriorly you need more disc clearance for that on the opposite side ha upar wala dal raha hai पहले में नीचे वाला डाला है सबसे ऊपर लाइक इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस वंस द स्क्रू हैज पास्ड बियॉन्ड द पोस्टीरियर वर्टिब्रल मार्जिन द गाइड वायर हैज बीन विथड्रॉन अनदर थिंग टू बी टेकन केयर ऑफ व्हेन यू व्हेन यू टैप इट व्हेन यू टैप इट ऑन टॉप ऑफ द गाइड वायर यू डोंट टैप इट बियॉन्ड द टिप ऑफ द गाइड वायर अदरवाइज द गाइड वायर विल बिकम लूज एंड विल कम आउट 
then you have to go back to the ap view to get your jamshedi in yes dekho theek hai okay rod size kya lena what is the uh, rod size that you have you have the gauge to measure on top Hmm. Pro sizes are good. Again. Hmm. Usually, I'm matching the L5 right now because that's the body where the canal is closer. So we can always actually the true body. Uh, do we need to pull back the cage? I doubt. I think it's okay. is just that marginal difference there and there you want to stay as entire as possible also hmm nahi ja raha okay hmm usko nikal do guide wire ko नहीं वो ऑस्टिफाइट आ रहा होगा ना दैट्स द प्रॉब्लम यू हैव नो ऑप्शन बट टू क्रश इट शूट प्लीज गोइंग गाइड वेर आउट गाइड वेर आउट वही चैलेंज है जो मैं कह रहा हूँ ठीक है बट इन मैनेजर शूट प्लीज हाथ आपका हाथ आ रहा है Uh, shoot again hmm now the rod hmm yeah, we can try hmm now the rod insertion like in this particular case choti lag rahi hai ye hmm dikha na Is okay. No, no. There is a lot of. Okay, now. No, this is okay. Hmm. Hmm. It's at me, na. And you don't want to stay very behind, also, because if some reduction happens, then you are in in a little bit of a trouble there. I'm unable to engage it. I don't know where the rod is. Right? Why is it not working? Okay, this is a long way to go. Hmm. Show. Go to or up. Turn the rod. Hmm. Now shoot. What? No. Go to or up. Turn the. No. At lever. Do on my side. Ah. Now. Now shoot. You want one larger rod? Hmm. Oh, we are confused between the two views. Huh? Shoot. Oh, we are looking at this one. Hmm. Okay. Chalo. Dusra ek hi nahi dega. Aisa ek aur handle nahi hai. एक और हैंडल नहीं है ऐसा ओनली वन अदरवाइज यू कैन डू दैट साइमल्टेनियसली ना दिखा यू हैव रीजनेबल ब्रॉड अब
which tulip which tulip okay one with the हैंडल यही है नहीं नहीं दिस इज ओके दिस इज ओके लो दूसरा इट वी डोंट हैव अनदर वन लाइक दिस ओ सो वी हैव टू टेक इट आउट बट ऑप्शन वी हैव इफ वी हैव ओनली वन हैंडल वी डोंट हैव मेनी ऑप्शन राइट Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Hello, either for a first. Yeah. You see the reduction happening. So that's where uh, probably you know if you have two together, then it helps. And then once you achieve the reduction, then you can. Uh, uh, change the curvature of the rod also, but now it will be a bit of a task because then you have to take it out. We don't have the handle. We need another handle. इधर चेक किया था ना सब अंदर थी ना रोड चेक कर लिया था. Knife, please. Generally, we do. Oh, we have to go to the cadaveric also. And the patient is doing fine. Interesting. Deep jaw. Sheet, 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 sheet. Further deep. Hmm. Okay. Go, 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 go. No, go, go. No. Up check for. No, we need. No, no. We need to check. Check first. Check first. Okay. Yeah. Anything is okay. Feeler, you just put, 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 put. Now lift. Moving. Hmm. Okay. Take this back. Take this back. Okay. Give me another in this too. See the reduction here. Yeah. एक मिनट रुको फंस गया मैं ठीक ठीक लग रहा है देखते हैं दिखाओ शूट 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 जाएगा जाएगा बी लॉस्ट दिस गाइस आर बिजी ना ट्रांसमिशन वी वांटेड टू शो देम ना दिखाओ Oh, they are seeing it. No, but they said they are busy somewhere. They will not be able to for five minutes. Yeah, announcement is there. Rukja, shoot. Okay, ab dusra lao. Dusra lao. ठीक है ठीक है वो टाइम लगता है इट्स इट्स एक्सटेंडेड टैब ना बट लॉन्ग वन रुको दिखाओ गो स्लो गो स्लो बिकॉज यू माइट बी पुलिंग पुलिंग ऑन द स्क्रू ना दिखाओ ये न्यू वन सो डू यू वांट टू डू यू वांट टू रिमूव एंड डिपन योर स्क्रू रिमूव कर दो इसको एनी को हाँ रिमूव कर दो रिमूव कर दो Remove rod. You can remove the, the handle is there, na? Till the time this is. That's why I'm saying two handles. I could have now manipulated, loosen this one, tighten that one, loosen this one, tighten that one. You will get much better reduction. But now I cannot connect this with that. 
छोड़ दिया आपने आराम से स्लो 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 एक दे दो ना हाँ अब इमर कर दो इधर वाला भी निकाल दो ये मेरा स्क्रू ड्राइवर आई विल हेल्प यू विद नो जस्ट पुट इट लाइक दिस इनसाइड व्हेन ही कम्स ठीक है ठीक है स्लो जाना बिकॉज द टैब ऐसा है ना वो वो स्लो 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 हाँ गो 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 ओके स्क्रू ड्राइवर फॉर द टॉप वन काफी पॉली है ना हाँ यही है यही यही है यही यही है यही है परफेक्ट सो वी कैन वी गोइंग टू क्लोज वेरी सोन इफ यू वांट टू कनेक्ट इन द ऑडिटोरियम वंस टाइम लग रहा है उसको ना डायरेक्शन भी नहीं पता ना हो गया ना हाँ अभी देख के करना हाँ, second, your hand, yeah. Shoot, please. Hmm, थोड़ा टाइटन करो 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 दिखाओ ये टाइटन है ठीक hmm. है वी आर पुटिंग द फाइनल रॉड सो डू यू डू यू बाय कन्वेंशन ऑल्सो compress the rod uh here in this particular case no so which are the cases in which you compress all the rod ye na yaar nirul where kon phekega ek hi aadmi to tha purana kis color ka hai just one second doctor yes i'm coming back uh I am very wary about compressing the rod in uh, patients who have uh, spond who have lot of spondylosis. There, the posterior cage migration rate is very high. So, those are the patients where we usually do a rod compression. Is it okay? एक बार दिखाना shoot. which is the one this one okay na so we are getting we are getting quite decent reduction that way the only thing i am missing is two two rod inserting handle simultaneously hmm shoot please hmm Slow, 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 slow. Shoot. Okay. Okay. Final, please. So I think, considering our restraints, uh, Doctor Pithwa, we will stop here. Uh, it's been a wonderful exposition. Thank you so much. We we all surgeons realize how difficult it is to work in a new setup with a new set of. <laughs> staff no, I, and I new think instruments has been very very cooperative that way the only challenge i would like there's something to learn for everybody is that you want to do mis you like next time we do it here we need everything bayonet for sure because it just keeps coming in the field of your vision whatever you do that is one very very important factor and a very good high speed drill that helps a lot i actually would have not mind with the because our drill is not working very well what i was trying to tell the opposite facet there is a big osteophyte so when manoj was trying to put the lower screw in that osteophyte is actually overhanging so you have got an entry point somehow for the guide wire but when you are trying to set set in the tulip there that osteophyte is a big obstruction in a way and the, the facet is so sclerotic so it would not be a bad idea if you put in your tube and just shave it off or bar it off and then it, it 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 actually allows you easier insertion of the tulip because you want to go deep on that lower vertebra so that you can achieve good leverage for your reduction mm -hmm. 
so we are signing out now uh, it it's, it's been wonderful thank you thank you very much thank you dr bitwa thank you dr kamath thank you dr maskarenas for coordinating and you guys have been very very patient despite uh, we taking a little longer than the usual time that we will do but considering you understand the new place and the instruments and the uh, slightly the nutcracker this uh, uh, list this is so a little bit of a challenge but uh, i think we are happy with what we have achieved so far so are we a round of applause thank you so much thank you for thank you for all the support and a big thanks to our anesthetic team and our colleagues all the orthopedic surgeons who have been working hard for all those weeks till we reached here and all the john staff and the technical staff in the theater uh, uh, i think round of applause should be for them yeah that's the new lateral na huh? yeah yeah if you have simultaneous it would have gone there theek hai still patient will be happy and asymptomatic as what matters to us little bit of acetyl karna padega aapko ha ha then come to my side next session will be ka hmm. next session will be on the cadaver workshop in the uh, anatomy dissection hall okay uh, right side to, that uh, looks good. right side to the uh, yeah the cage is quite in the middle the screws are okay uh, thank you yeah. i think that's it uh, when i was doing the decompression i was around 30 degree going medial into the yeah into the canal because that's how you can lift it from the center na Uh, this is the final or there was one after that okay great thank you so much thank you oh thank you uh somebody has to close also na you'll do that oh thank you thank you i think we would do that with i think better to go to the cadaveric also because there are people waiting thank you madam thank you so much oops Ajay, oh, hey, one second. Just put it. I will take a picture with this. Mano, ja ja. Yeah, yeah. We, once we finish, we'll take a picture. Then we go down. Ajay, Mano, idhar aja. Hmm. We will keep the mask, mask on. Theater, na. Aise aja. Aap idhar se aja. Nice. Is okay. No, no, no. Not in the theater, no. With this one, my camera is there. We will take one picture with the team when we go. Once once they finish, na, then we take one picture. Working. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, who can do it? Oh, we'll need some help with that. I don't want to damage this.